Yeah. There has been a disaster tragedy that requires all of your immediate attention. Don't you stand there and judge me like I'm some kind of criminal. I am here merely to tell you that the day will come. I don't give a fuck. You either get used to it or you get lost. I'm working something out. It's called a metaphor. Whoa, what are you working out? It's secret. That's why it's called metaphor. It's a secret. That's what metaphor means. Secret. <laughs> fuck those dumplings. Broadcasting live from downtown Cleveland. You're supposed to be dead. Sorry to disappoint. Could you um, roll me one of those cowboys? I'll tell you what. I'd like to bend her over a barrel and show her the 50 states, you know what I'm saying? On MorningShowCentral.com. You want to leave the condom off? Go for it. You think you got issues? Please. Enlighten. Wait till you get a load of these clowns. Who the fuck are you? Come here to get your weekly fix of Sick and Twisted. Yeah, it's got its tongue up my ass. No! No, 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 no. It's uncensored noise. 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 Come on in. Oh, and bring your whore. Pull all this and blow. What the fuck's going on? Showcentral.com. Yeah, that was uh, probably the first sign of the apocalypse. Previously, Previously on Uncensored Net Noise. I got a question. Have you ever seen your mom naked? No. Well, yeah. You like how that just came out of nowhere? Yeah, I'm I have. I was thinking about that. I've I've never seen my mother naked. I walked in on my mother at I one did time. find my mother's vibrator once. Oh, God. I don't even want to hear this one. Th- I said, what is... I looked and said, oh. And I, I confirmed my mother. She goes, oh, that's just um, a massager. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what are you massaging with right. from the inside? Right. <laughs> exactly. Wow. <laughs> Everything now is closing in. <laughs> I stumbled across something earlier today. A used condom? On no, your, no, your no. Chin? No, no, not, not a used condom. I stumbled across something today. Uh, um, you heard that Paul Stanley rant? Oh, yeah. Yeah, here. Yeah, here's a little bit of it, though. All right! Toronto! You feel good! All right, then, listen. You know, we may be under clear blue skies, but you know, it's getting a little... Cool out tonight, but that ain't gonna stop us. Cause if we try hard enough, we're gonna get this place. I said we're gonna get this place. How did it help? I think he's on crack. Yeah. He's on penis. That's what he's on. Something. That's it. Who would actually go and see? Like, do you think young chicks would still go see Paul Stanley and kiss? No, I, I don't think. Unless, it, their, unless their parents are taking them. It, it's got to be the Cougars are still going, right? Yeah, it's got to be. To all the girls and all the women we got here tonight, because there's a fine bunch here tonight in Pittsburgh. Really? In Pittsburgh? Really? He went there. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Have you actually seen the women in Pittsburgh? Um. No, I don't think there are any. No, they're all toothless, snaggle tooth. Yeah, they're, they're, no, they're, no. 
than the chicks in Detroit. I swear to God. The chicks in Detroit, man, they're, they're awful, too. Did you ever date any chicks from Detroit? No, I haven't, though, but I drove through there very, very fast because I didn't want to get mugged. All these memories I wonder what this one is. Let me see. Hold on. We'll play this one. What is this right here? Uh, where'd it go? It's right here. Oh. One more time! Well, Richmond, you kept your end of the bargain. I'm coming out to see my people. surprised he can still do that oh well, yeah when you ain't got nuts you could do that i guess Twenty-seven years. Yep. Twenty-seven years, and he still hasn't grown nuts. Oh, if you notice, we haven't even started the show yet. We haven't? I, no. I thought we were just rolling with it. I guess. What's the weirdest place you ever had sex down? In front of a funeral home while my girlfriend was laid out in the casket. Are you? St- I was with her sister in the front. Are you serious? Uh, yes. <laughs> Did you ever have sex at a Home Depot? If, if I had the opportunity, I would. All right. Well, I got a story in a yeah, few one minutes. of those little porta potties there. Well, close. I got something. Oh, 
You want to call the show? The number is 888-668-0742 or get to the website, morningshowcentral.com. Jump in the chat. Dom's in there right, uh, right now. So am I. I'm in there this week, too. That's right. I wanted to jump in there this week to find out what's going on because there was some crazy nonsense last week on the show when we had Josh Walmack in there. Um, oh, what happened? Uh, was some I don't know. Some heckler in there. Yeah. I saw a heckler was heckling a comedian? Exactly. Wow, why, where would that happen? I don't know, but I just wanted to see if it happened again, though, but evidently not. So, we do have a band in studio tonight. That's right. We have uh, Seek Shelter in studio. I thought you said you were going to say C, you know, C. Diff. No, not C. Diff. No, I said... That'd be a cool name for a band, though. It would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, yeah I'd go there with it. Yeah. But we got Seek... So, seek... So, you almost had me do that. Seek Shelter in, in the building. Uh, they're going to be on a little later tonight, about 9.30 tonight. We're going to talk to them for a little bit and find out what's going on. they got a gig going on uh, here in a couple weeks or days or whatever. they got a new CD that they're working on right now. And, Sweet. Um, we got some music from them tonight we're going to play and all kinds of crazy nonsense. Um, also, the Uncensored Net Noise Birthday Bash is coming up September 20th over at the Rock City Tap House in Cleveland. Doors uh, open up at 8. Show starts at 9. Ticket, well, door, if you go to the door, it's 8 bucks. Uh, if you're under 21, it's a $3 cover charge to get in. Um, it's all sponsored by our uh, good friends over at Lakewood Computers, Hanini Subs, uh, Cocaine Energy Drink, and uh, JW Media. So uh, check it out online at our website at morningshowcentral.com or mscradionetwork.com. Or you can go to our website, uncensorednetnoise.com. There you'll be able to find all the information for the uh, birthday bash. Great bands on the show. Necros Obscuro is going to be on the show. Morality Check, uh, Darling Waste, and uh, we also have the Burning Harlots who are going to be playing. Special appearance by uh, Joe from Demons Within. He's going to be at the show. Uh, also, Rock City Cleveland is going to be at the show as well. They're going to be selling some of their merch and their shirts over at the uh, uh, at the show as well. Uh, comedian Josh Walmack will be in the building as well. He's going to uh, come out and check out the bash uh, this year. He was on last week. He also sent me a thank you card for uh, for coming on the show last week. So that was really cool of him. But yeah, we got a lot going on in September. Uh, next week, we have the uh, two bands coming in from the birthday bash, Morality Check and Necros Obscuro. They'll both be in studio. Uh, no, Morality Check and the Burning, Burning Harlots will be in, in studio next week. And then the following week, Necros will be in studio. And then uh, the Dar- Darling Waste will be on the phone, I believe. So uh, a lot going on in the month of September. And also, there's another show coming up. Uh, September 14th over... Dom's got this one. Go ahead and do this one. Because it's your show you're playing. Oh, on. man. We got this wicked-ass show. This is the Maximum Threshold 7th Anniversary Show Presents... The skull. If you guys are man, if you if you're kind of got some little age on you, and you were in the um, early metal in the '80s, uh, man, there's this band called Trouble. The man, they were a doom band. They're still still kicking. They got a new record out right now, a new release. But this is some they, this, these guys, man, Eric Wagner, Ron Holzner, and Jeff Ole Olson. These guys were so, they're sort of like the original guys from the band Trouble. They put together they put together this group called the skull and what they do is they perform all trouble stuff and but they're all they're also working on some new material right now but what they're doing they're playing the first show on as a as a tour and, and for us for maximum threshold and it's a september 14th at tequila jacks and it's gonna be really cool got another band from chicago coming down called earth and grave man if you guys are in a doom or any type of like black sabbathy kind of sound bands you got to check this out, man, because this is really cool. Then you got the band Gluttons. If you're familiar with Gluttons, you know the Human Furnace sings in that one. 
and he's going to be there, the band, Dead East Garden, and of course the band I'm in, Morning Wagon, we're going to be taking a stage and just fucking tearing it up like we did uh, a couple weeks ago at the same place, and encore performance to a sold out crowd and we're looking forward to this this is going to be this is going to be huge too so we got tickets for sale man you could also call 440-709-4080 and somebody will deliver tickets to you and tickets are $15 in advance 18 day of the show this is a real concert that we're putting so on so that's right so people in uh, Chicago and Michigan and all over the we could the- we could overnight them to you and we take pay, pay Dom will uh, Dom will hand deliver these tickets to you at the door, at at his, with his, you know, hoopty that he drives, he he will go to your door. He will hand deliver these things right to you. That's right. No, he won't. That's right. No, he won't. As long as you give me gas money. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> no, you can actually give him through PayPal. This uh, Dom can set that all up. You go to their website, more uh, maximumthreshold dot net. There, all the information's there. You'll be able to find it. All right, I said I had a story that I want to talk about real quick. It was from Home Depot. There was a couple that was found having sex in one of those uh, tool sheds. Those, yeah. those one, oh, yeah. Those sheds that they that they have up in front of the stores. You know, like those demo, the demo sheds. Yeah. And uh, they're not fully complete. Well, they, there's doors on them and everything. Well, overnight the store closed, and I guess this couple was, you know, they were wanting to get hot and heavy with each other. Oh. So, oh, wow. so they decided at eight forty a.m. in the morning they were they wanted to um, go have sex because yeah. they were out for like an all night bender or whatever it was. All night what? All night bender. Well, out at the bars having drinks and I got you. Yeah, okay. And uh, this uh, this this all started around eight forty in the morning when officers were called to the Home Depot in uh, North Charleston. And they found these two having sex in one of these uh, demo, I guess you want to call sheds that they put out in front of the building to show people what they would look like when you buy them. And uh, officers uh, uh, discovered that they were both undressed. The man's penis was hanging out. And uh, the woman was uh, uh, partially naked. She wasn't fully naked. They were just about to get into the, the deed uh, when, the, when the officers came a knocking. Yes. And they opened up the door and they took them to jail. And now they're spending some time in uh, jail right now for for, de- do nothing. for indecent exposure. Now, here, but here's my thing, though. Okay. Everybody had sex in a public place before. In a DIY farm. Whatever. You know, my wife had sex in a church at one point. You know, so, it, I mean, I had sex at a, in a Metro Parks before. Who hasn't? You know, I mean, come on. This is a Home Depot. And... and and it was one of those little sheds. Who cares? It was like that guy that was streaking across the the field uh, for the Browns game. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. He he ran naked across the field. Who cares? Well, there was kids that were there. Who cares? Do you really think that the kids are gonna really notice a big blur going across this, the the field? Well, if it was me, yeah, they would. Well, yeah, because you'd walk across the field. I'd be like, I'd be flaunting it. Right. Exactly. I'd be like, whoa. Look at this. Look at my little, my noodle. While the Who wants da- to go swimming with this noodle? While Abba's playing in the background, Dancing Queen. That's perfect. <laughs> right, exactly. But yeah, I mean, come on. It, it, the, the, the two were having sex at, in one of these little prefab buildings at Home Depot in front of it. I mean, come on. All the police officer had to do was, look, come on, guys. Get your clothes on. Yeah, you know, but no, Home Depot had to had to turn around and, and flex their muscle and and tell them. Did he well, frisk them? Well, no. Well, there's nothing to frisk. Them. Hello. So, but here, but I I can't figure out why why they got charged with all this. I mean, they had the doors closed. Nobody saw them. They how they got caught was uh, one of the employees was coming in for their you know their shift. Yeah. They actually heard some noise and some ruckus going on inside there. But they didn't hear. They didn't. She didn't see anything. So they contacted the police because they thought some someone was in there or yeah. whatever sleeping or whatever. And they, they thought maybe it might have been you know like a homeless guy you know just trying to get out of the elements or whatever. Mm-hmm. And lo- sounds like somebody was trying to get in some elements. Exactly. So lo and behold, they found these two you know just going at it. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you expect? South Carolina. Well, I so. would expect that anywhere, you know. Right. I mean, it happened in Cleveland. I'm sure people got caught having sex in those things, you know, before here in you Cleveland. You ever got caught doing it? No, I never got caught. I mean, because, you know, well, because you would, 
you would kind of plan your escape. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You would also figure out the location where, you, you know, how many exits you have to get the hell up out of there. Yeah. Well, you're in one of these little barn things. There's not too many exits, but one. Oh, yeah. So when they open up the doors and the cops are there and they got a, you know, a 45 pointed at your forehead. Nah. You know, and it could be because they think maybe, you know, someone is in there, you know, you know, it's going to rob the place or something or hiding in there or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I get where the cops come from. But, you know, you would think the cops would go, all right, look, get your clothes on, get the hell up out of here. That's you know, right. this is your warning. But no, Home Depot decided to flex your muscles a little bit and get them arrested. Pricks, man. Right, exactly. Damn. See, you know, you know, it had to been an old guy right. or an old chick working there, you know, who wasn't getting any. Right. And they're like, man, no, because if they ain't getting any, I'm not going to let, the, you know, if I can't get none, they ain't getting none. Mm-hmm. And if they ain't getting none, I, I, at least let me watch. But they weren't doing nothing. So since they ain't watching, I got other people standing behind me. So I got to make some action. Got to do something. And if I don't do something, I'm going to look bad. And if I look bad, that means I'm, other people going to talk about me. And it's just not going to work out. Now, now, if let's say you you worked at that Home Depot and yeah. you were coming in for your daily shift. And you saw these two knocking boots in one of these things. Would you report them or would you just like politely knock on the door and say dude you got to get out of here before the store really opens and you know you, you you might get in trouble by management or something what would you do would you bust on them or would you you know try to get them out of there so they wouldn't get in trouble i wouldn't do nothing you wouldn't do nothing you just I'd walk, walk past? i'd walk around it would you watch no i wouldn't watch i'd just walk around it because i'm just thinking doors are gonna open they're gonna get caught and I just want to stand by and watch them get caught. Oh, nice. You're one of yeah. those type of people. You're one of those type That's of people. Funny. Watch him run around. The guy's got a shoe in one hand, and his penis and his, in the other, and his you know, <laughs> sock on his thing. <laughs> and the girl's running with her flappy flapjacks flopping around, oh my God. and herself in the chin. Well, she's not that bad looking. Yes, yeah, she is. Ah, uh, no, nah, nah. she's borderline crackhead. Yeah, meth head. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're yeah, sort of. I'm sure she's she stuck a few pipes in her mouth. Probably. So I think that day, if they had give a few more times, she would have had a pipe in her mouth. She might have. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, have you ever gotten a fight with your with your old lady about like you know you got cats? Yeah, I have one. All right. Do you ever get in a fight with her about you know changing the kitty litter or anything like that? No. Who changes it? The kids or you? Yeah, the kids. The kids. Uh, well, if the kids don't do it, I do it. Really? Let me tell. T- speaking of that, this is my cat's doing right now. I think he's trying to let us know he's dying. The cat's sleeping in the litter box. Is that a sign? Yeah. He's on his way out, right? Yeah. How old is the cat? Oh, he's probably about four or five. Really? He's not that old. The cat's sleeping in the litter box? Yeah, he's like, he just looks up and like... He doesn't he, want to get up and take a shit? You know, he just lay in the box he'll go, when he has he'll, to go? He'll walk a couple feet to his little food box, eat, right back to the fat? shit box. No. No? Right back to the shit box. Wow. I think he's trying to kill himself. Well, well here... Okay, speaking of that, authorities in uh, Florida... So they arrested a man that was accused of threatening to kill his wife because she refused to change the litter box. Bitch better change that box. Yeah. So uh, county sheriff's officers and deputies said uh, they spoke to the wife, and 59 years old, and she told them the couple had been fighting all day uh, in their North Palm home or whatever. And the, uh, the guy, the husband... Went ahead and started saying threats to her, saying that, you know, if you don't change this litter box, I'm going to, you know, stab fuck you. Your, in the, I'm going to fuck your cat. Right. I'm going to stab you in the neck or something. And then he also said, do you want to kill me? Do you, do you want me to kill you? I will kill you. He allegedly told his wife. And the, uh, the, the verbal statements were going back and forth. So yeah. the guy was arrested. Uh, for verbal threats to his wife, and uh, he's spending time in jail right now. He had to, he has to post bond for a thousand bucks. He was also uh, charged with uh, deadly weapons. Mm-hmm. So, so he's not, he's got to post bail for a thousand bucks. Now, now here's the thing, though. If if would you go that far to tell your wife or your girlfriend or whoever that you know, you know, if you don't change the litter box, I'm going to stab you in the neck with this, you know spatula that we pull out the shit with mm, it all depends man how bad it is because you know that that fucking neck that kitty piss man stinks right, right i don't have cats i'm lucky i have two dogs and uh they're pretty good at, skippy yeah at, at at certain times they're pretty good there's times where they 
You know, like well, she, well, with my other dog, she's really, really old. She's God. She's got to be in. Uh, what is she about? 13, 14 years old. Damn, you got a walker for her yet? Dude, we have to carry her up the steps. Oh, That's how bad it is sometimes. It's she, time, man. She it's walks. Time. No, she walks around, no problem, upstairs in the house, wherever. You know, um, she she plays and she jumps outside and everything. Um, but when you when it's time for her to walk up the steps to go back up in the house, yeah, it's like, fuck you, pick me up. You know, mm-hmm. so we have to pick her up, carry up the flight of steps, and then we got to carry her down the steps mm-hmm. because one time she took a tumble. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. We Did got you scared. laugh? No, I didn't laugh, dude. I got scared, dude. <laughs> Did you ever throw your dog off the balcony and no. see they land on their feet? No, that's a cat, dude. And no, Oh, I didn't. damn. No wonder my dogs always died. <laughs> exactly. They still land on their feet, though. Uh-huh. Well, one didn't. One did. That's because we threw him into a car. Oh, Jesus I couldn't tell. I'm, that was traffic, too. Really? Ooh, it was mm. nice. Uh, well, speaking of that, PETA is involved in uh, women's pregnancy again. You know, I had a dog. He dog ran away. Ran? And when I found him like a, an hour later, he got run over. But you know how the dog got killed? How? A car ran his face over. Oh, my God. It was messed up. Do you like chicken? Oh, hell yeah. All right. Well, PETA's trying to bar pregnant women from eating chicken. I don't know why. They said they said that uh, it will affect their newborn child and the way they are the way they develop in the fetus. Yeah. You know, in the womb, I mean. Oh, what did one unborn baby say to the other unborn baby? I don't know. This is going to be bad, but go ahead. <laughs> We're two hungry fetus. <laughs> oh god. Don't dump, dump. But so PETA, PETA is uh, involved with this whole uh, chicken. You know how they, they're always you know, trying to go out and stop the slaughter of cows and chickens and all this stuff. Well, now they put a, they put a little twist on it now. They're actually trying to plead to pregnant women out there not to eat chicken because there's a, there's a, a place in um, where they say? New, uh, Buffalo, New York. Hey, this day's coming up pretty good pretty soon. You maybe want to pimp it. Happy anti pita Day, 11-18. Yep. Oh, okay. So you could celebrate by eating meat right. that day. Well, they're, they're trying to ban pregnant women from eating chicken. So there's a, a local place in Buffalo, New York, where they're trying to you know, implement all this. There's a place in there that is having like chicken eating, chicken wing eating contest yeah. all the time. It's like, a, I guess, a bar or whatever. So there's some, some sort of festival that goes on in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. So Pete is trying to put their, their their I guess their two cents in, and try to they're trying to stop the organization from having these sort of you know kind of events you know and when there's pregnant women there and everything like that. I look at it this way: if you want to eat chicken, go for it. There, there, no, we've been eating animal flesh for our existence. Yeah. Um, why stop now? There's been pregnant women that eat chicken. I thought it was fish is the problem because the mercury in it. Right, exactly. You you think they would stop eating fish, but PETA doesn't care if you like snag a, a trout out of, out of the lake or something like that. They care about the chickens and the cows and and the slaughtering of you know animals. I get where they're trying to go, where they want it more humane and all this other stuff. But how humane can you actually be to you know like clobber a cow in the head to kill them just to get the meat? Well, how else are you gonna get it? You should. You get it while they're walking, just chop off and right. go? Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. There's no other way to really do it. They have to slice the... They knock the cow out. They put them in this, like, stirrup thing. Have you ever watched one of those That's slaughtering hot. things? That's fucking sexy. Oh, my God. The, the, the cow gets wrangled into, like, this fence-type thing, mm-hmm. his head sticking out of it, and then they, they one of the farmers or whatever knocked the cow in the head to, like, disorient him or whatever, yeah. and then this big-ass fucking guillotine comes down <laughs> and chops his head off. I want to see that. It's, it's freaking... It's crazy, though. Is but that, that YouTube? Yeah. Well, I think no, live links. That's where I say you'll find all that crap on live links. But that that's how we get our meat. There's no other way to get it. I mean, if you put a bullet in the, in the cow's head, yeah. It's not going to be good for you. Why? Well, I mean, you know, cuz you got all that, you know, shrapnel that goes through the body and stuff like that through his bloodstream and you shoot him in the head. So you, you'll get all that shrapnel. Oh, you chop their neck. I'll say you more about the blood. Right, exactly. That's perfect. Right. So, uh, and, and I think it's more humane to do it that way by chopping off a cow's head. Because they don't even know what's coming. Right, exactly. Because as soon as you get hit with the ball ping hammer in the head, the guillotine comes down That's... and takes his head off. Oh. It's perfect. Yummy. Right, exactly. That we could eat. Right. Mm, I have no steaks. problem with that. I have no problem with that. 
All right, listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get uh, seek, shel- seek Shelter on the show. We're going to talk to those guys for a little bit, play a little bit of their music, and uh, find out what's going on with those guys. And uh, don't forget to check out the website, MSC Radio Network, for more information on the Uncensored Net Noise 7th Annual Birthday Bash at the uh, Rock City Tap House in Parma. Uh, tickets are 8 bucks at the door. And show the doors open at eight, and show starts at nine. So uh, check out all the information on the website. We'll be right back. You listen to Uncensored Net Noise on MorningShowCentral.com. You're listening. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. <laughs> Don't touch that mouse, or we'll come to your home and pistol whip you. Ah! You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network right here on MorningShowCentral.com. Hey, this is Steve Snyder from Twisted Sister, and you're listening to Uncensored Net Noise. If you're looking for the best in musical equipment, recording gear, sound reinforcement, and more, Guitar Center has you covered. Guitar Center, located at 26635 Brook Park Road in North Olmsted, has the tools of your trade. With the largest selection of music and sound gear in the area, they cater to your musical needs and have the knowledge to help you out. Guitar Center in North Olmsted. MorningShowCentral.com uses them. You should, too. Need to know more? Go to GuitarCenter.com. You want a date? I'm going to puke on you. Gee, I don't think I have a price for that. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. Right here on MorningShowCentral.com. If you have a product or service, let people know about it. Get your message out there and advertise on MSC Radio Network. It's easier than you think. And the whole planet is listening. Find out how you can advertise. Email Chris at MorningShowCentral.com. Looking for reliable and affordable Shoutcast audio or video hosting? JWN Media offers complete Shoutcast hosting solutions for business or personal use. All plans come with full listener stats, custom web scripts for implementing your service into your existing website, full server control, super fast network, and huge bandwidth limits, a 99.5% uptime guarantee, and friendly, knowledgeable support personnel dedicated to making your hosting experience fun and easy. With plans starting at only three dollars a month you have no excuse not to get a server of your own plus with the option to add auto dj and on-demand services you can be confident your station will be all it can be custom plans are also available at their website simply visit jwnmedia.com and click the shoutcast hosting link to get started right now Hey, local bands and unsigned artists. What if I told you there was a place in Cleveland where you can get your merch made and have it sold in one location? What if I said you could bring your CDs and tickets to upcoming shows to this location? And what if I said you could do live acoustic sets at this location? I bet you're thinking there's no such place in Cleveland. Guess what? You'd be wrong. Contact Rick Navario at Rock City, Cleveland, and tell him you need merch made and you want to sell it in his store. Now, how cool is that? You can tell your fans to come down and get your stuff, and I think he'd ship your products to your fans. And he's local. Contact Rick Navario at Rock City, Cleveland today, 216-622-0377. That's 216 216- 622-0377. Call the show toll free. 1-888-668-0742. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network on MorningShowCentral.com. Oh, wow. Language. Okay, he was PMSing. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. And- Check out Uncensored Net Noise every Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here. Uncensored Net Noise on MorningShowCentral.com. Oh, great. Not another Farmville request. Check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MorningShowCentral. Denying one Farmville request at a time. <laughs> Prepare to get your car rock to Kingdom Come. Huh? Welcome back to the show that doesn't discriminate. We'll bang everyone equally. You can handle that? You've got a job. It's Uncensored Net Noise. It's Uncensored Net Noise. Welcome back to Uncensored Net Noise. Live on MorningShowCentral.com. If you'd like to call the show, 1-888-668-0742. 
Lakewood Computer, located at 14035 Madison Avenue in Lakewood, has it all. If you're in need of computer repairs or want to cut the cost of ink cartridges and printing supplies, count on Lakewood Computer in Lakewood, Ohio to provide it all. For the past five years, Lakewood Computer has been providing you with a huge assortment of computer equipment and services at very competitive prices. Lakewood Computer purchases and sells pre-owned desktops, laptops, and related equipment, and they offer outstanding prices on aftermarket printing supplies, including toner cartridges and ink cartridges. With 29 years of professional experience, Lakewood Computer is highly confident in their ability to enhance your overall computing experience. Check them out online at joeslakewoodcomputer.com. That's joeslakewoodcomputer.com. Or give them a call toll-free, 855-580-0768. That's 855-580-0768. I know, I know, oh my god, I know what we're gonna do. Oh, it's so delicious, I can almost taste it. If you're looking for the best sub shop in town, look no further. Hanini Subs, located at 7310 Lorraine Avenue, is the place for you. Stop in for a cold cut sub, cheeseburger and fries, wingdings and fries, and so much more. I can almost taste it. Hanini Subs at 7310 Lorraine Avenue is open 24 hours a day. Check them out on Facebook, facebook.com slash burrito crazy. And if you mention MSC Radio Network, you'll get a dollar off your meal. It's all good at Hanini Subs. So damn good. The following message is for those with a credit score of 800 and below. Who wouldn't want better credit? Did you ever wonder how different life would be from just having a higher credit score? Are you tired of being turned down for any kind of loan or only offered high interest rates because your credit score is holding you prisoner? Life doesn't have to be that way anymore with access to TurnScore. By increasing your credit score only 50 to 100 points, it can potentially save you tens of thousands of dollars in interest over just a 5 to 10 year period. It can be the difference in getting approved for a personal loan, business loan, high limits on credit cards, a brand new car lease, or even a home mortgage. We see so many ads from companies that give us our credit score, but once we get our credit score, what are they going to do to actually repair your credit? Unfortunately, nothing. Until now, TurnScore is the first automated credit repair platform that is simple, safe, and secure. You'll be empowered right from the comfort of your own computer so you can challenge and repair your credit report to ensure it's fair and accurate. Turn score is specifically developed with you in mind. There's no more need for an attorney, credit repair companies, or credit counseling. More importantly, no more need for paying higher fees. Turn score will help you get back on track and get the buying power you need. So whether you have bad credit, average credit, or even good credit, Turn score is helping turn lives around one credit score at a time. Go to turnscore.com and enter the promo code MSC20 and get 20 bucks off your purchase. That's T U R N S C O com T-U-R-N-S-C-O-R.com. Turnscore.com. Yeah! 
previously on Uncensored Net Noise. It's, it's like flowers in the attic with your with your mom. Or do you have her like chained up in your in, no, in, I, in, no. in the She's, attic or something? Maybe no. you've turned her off the men down. Right, exactly. I, maybe I did. I don't know, man. That's kind of weird. It, maybe she just needs like mandingo to fucking move her organs around inside of her heart. <laughs> I didn't she want to go there. Movement. I'm just thinking maybe like an old. Call my mother up, ask her. She, when was the last time she had some dick? <laughs> some dick. <laughs> She'll disown you if I called her. See, I didn't want to say cock because that doesn't sound good when you talk about your own mom. No, it's <laughs> filthy when you're talking about your mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you play the tape of our show backwards, you'll discover a secret message. <laughs> Welcome back to Uncensored Net Noise. All right, guys, we're back. If you want to call the show, the number is 888-668-0742. Or get to the website, morningshowcentral.com. Jump in the chat. Dom's in there right now, so am I. Yeah, there's like, I'm counting the number of people in the chat room. We got 42 people in the chat room right now. Awesome. The chat room holds 50 people. <laughs> so if you want to get in there, you better get in the chat right now. Morningshowcentral.com slash watch. Yeah. All right. Um, don't forget the Uncensored Net Noise birthday bash over at the uh, Rock City. 44 people in the chat room now. Nice. Thanks, splendid cervix for popping in the chat room <laughs> blended cervix that's awesome all right uh tell me a little bit about the band and uh let's get into this real quick so how long have you guys been around uh we first started in about 2010 and then okay. about 2011 in the springtime we went on hiatus for personal reasons and then about summertime of last year we got back to writing new music and right doing that and then we had some member changes towards the the end of uh december and this gentleman sitting to my right is now the new well current drummer right and he's been with us since december and then uh in about april of this year we decided to get rid of our vocalist and we have brandon who's going to be on later nice he's a badass drummer too we were just watching the beard fest video i was going to get into that a little bit too uh, about the whole beard beard, beard, beard stock was or it? beard stock yeah. beard fest what was it uh, beard stock on oh, beard stock I was getting there okay and now what, what was this like a gymnasium type thing or, or I mean because we were looking at it like it looked like some school or something no it was actually a uh, youth center oh was it yeah okay all right well close enough if you want to it's got kids still yeah so it didn't matter now was it a big turnout. Uh, yeah, the only th- thing that kind of sucked for us is we played earlier in the day, so there wasn't ne- that many people. Yeah, but yeah. by the end of the night, it was packed. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do you think about those type of shows, though, where they, they throw you up on there first when there's nobody around and stuff like that? Do you care about that? or you know? uh, Not really, because this year we kind of got booked on uh, about a month before it was going to happen, kind of last minute, and then... Right. Um, <laughs> Brian, the guy that put it on, kind of, uh, kind of resented putting us or uh, regretted, I should say, putting us on that early. Okay. So, okay. And, and what, what's the uh, what do you think about the uh, Cleveland music scene right now? Um, it's actually better than it has been in the really? past couple of years. Yeah. I think I notice a lot of uh, a lot of bands here in Cleveland that are having you know some difficulty with the scene because of the fact is that you know they can't get on the right shows or they can't you know uh get the draw that they want and you know it, do you have any of that type of issue with uh, your band right now currently not really no no yeah and okay so what okay you you guys played what you said we were talking before the show about four shows so far since the new lineup yeah, yeah it's actually five shows five shows yes okay and um just uh Give me a little brief oversight about some of those shows that you guys played. Um, the first one, since we got our uh, singer Brandon, uh, we played at the Foundry in Lakewood, Ohio. Okay, how was that? Uh, actually, once again, it wasn't a. It was kind of a last minute show we jumped on, so okay, uh, wasn't too many people there for that. And the, the next couple ones we played, uh, we started going out uh, outside of Cleveland a little bit into Akron, and, right? Uh, right. Uh, Youngstown, that was Beardstock. Okay. 
Uh, th- those are better shows just going in different places that, you know, playing other venues and, like, weird places like youth centers. Like, Yeah. Right. Now, what was one of the weirdest places you guys played? Like, I mean, w- w- I, you probably can answer this question because, you know, the band's been around a long time. But, you know, since you since the band is formed, what what was the official year? O- 05, you said, or 09? No, uh, 2010. 2010. Yeah. Okay, so in 2010, what was one of the weirdest places you played, you know, since the band's been around now? Uh, like venue-wise? Yeah, venue-wise. Weirdest place you guys played? Like someone's backyard on someone's patio for a bunch of dogs. <laughs> Have you done that before? Not, uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Well, Dom's done that already, so you can always ask yes. him. Yes, I actually played um, one of the sh- couple shows back. Uh, this is no lie. Somebody killed herself after. Are you performed. serious? Yep. What did they do? Did they like? Was it? They like, overdosed uh, and they were hit this guy and this girl. They were in this big bloodlust thing. Wow. This guy just fucking off themselves. That's wow. crazy, man. I take pride in that. Wow. I take pride in that. That's crazy. Can you beat that? No, I can't. Um, how about you guys? Can you guys beat something like that? <laughs> I don't. Think I don't so. believe so. No. <laughs> no. Now you you you're new to the band, right? Yes. Pretty uh, much. Okay. So what other bands have you played in besides this one? Um, for around seven years i played in a signed band called cholera okay uh that one toured most of the east coast and everything okay is uh, that is that a cleveland band a local cleveland band here yeah or? okay all right and we just started uh when we got signed it was more than a little more than local we okay uh actually went around on a uh, huge we got a trying to think of what it was called it was Auburn magazine we got reviewed eight out of ten that's cool national distribution on our uh cd we put out okay that's cool. And um, you played in any other bands besides the one that you're currently in right now? What, yeah. What's the other ones you played in? Um, well, right now I still am in Gore Orphanage, but that's okay. been on hold. But Is that like a side project of, of you or somebody else? Well, or? I kind of fell backwards into that because right okay. when we went on hold with this band, uh, right. I was asked to join that band, so it kind of worked out. And yeah. then when that went on hold, I right. picked, this picked up again. Wow. And... and- uh, I before I started this band, I was jumping and filling in in bands, but right. uh, I was in for those with honor uh, up and from '06 until about uh, 2009 when we uh, broke up. That's cool. And as far as the other band, the other band that you were, you guys were in though, um, is there a big change? What, what kind of genre of music were you playing? Was it the same t- type of genre of music you're doing now? Uh, this is the for those with honor is more like hardcore influence and this is more like metal okay so. okay now we were listening to some of the music i listened to the, the one song that you guys played and was to me when i hear metal music you hear the cookie monster type of thing sometimes <laughs> a growl you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. now do you think that 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 this whole thing is is it like that here in cleveland the genre of music is it more you see more of that here in cleveland or maybe on the in the midwest with you know, with uh, bands, actually a lot of bands uh, I play with out of state. Uh, we have a very big metal following in Cleveland. Okay, uh, uh, go out of state more. Uh, so you go to Kentucky. It just depends where you're at, really. Right. Like uh, so, some people like they they listen and they're like, "Well, that's not my cup of tea." But you know what I mean. Right. You guys are awesome. <laughs> they right. still. Well, most of the time, Cleveland though, I've seen huge reactions with metal and right. scenes being created from it. Right. So who's some of your uh, influence? Let's start with you. Some of your influences in the music. Uh, big first one off, I'm always going to say Neil Peart. Okay. The doctor. <laughs> like, I, I've learned so much from him. Playing polyrhythmic star- structures and all that. Like, right. Um, Blake Richardson is in a drummer from Between the Berry to Me. Okay. I'm also for, I do vocals too. Okay. And uh, I love Steve Perry. Okay, that's good. Well, hey, you know what? I like Steve Perry. I don't. I don't like the Asian dude that's up there right yeah. now. You know, I mean, he. he I got to give him credit. He sort of. Well, he sort of sounds like him. You know, he's he's up there. You know, got to give him credit that they actually you know did something right and found someone that almost sounds like Steve Perry. My wife can tell right now that you know when I'm playing a Steve you know, a Journey song or something like that. You know, she goes, "Nope, that's not Steve Perry. That's the other guy." <laughs> she knows right off the rip. You know who it is. So yeah, I get that. But who's some of your who's some of your influences in music? Um, I have a ro- wide variety of music. Yeah. But just um, I'd say like for what we play, right? Like old stuff like Metallica, Sepultura, 
my sugar. Okay. And it. You're uh, old school metal. Well, yeah, but I'm also I'm still new school. I like. Ooh, some of the new school stuff you like. Um, like impending doom, sworn in. Not a fan the, of those guys. What, I'm uh, really not a fan sworn of them. Yeah. A pending doom. I'm not really. I'm not really a fan of those guys. I listened. To, I, there was a YouTube video that popped up on Facebook, uh-huh. and I was watching the video, and I'm not really. I, I wasn't really too into the, the. I can't remember the name of the song they played though, but it was. To me, it was a little bit too hardcore for me. You know what I'm saying? I like. I, I don't know. I, I, I sort of like the genres of like. The old school Metallica. The mm-hmm. oh, I mean, I'm talking about the old, not the new stuff. Yeah, like uh, '80s, right? You know that type of that, that that type of metal. But today's metal is more of like the growl. You get the more of the growl thing in there. You know, like someone's you know is doubled over because they got bit in the head by a zombie or something. <laughs> you know. So I mean, I get I get that whole thing though, and you know, it, there's certain points where it's really cool when you when you're when it's in a song, but I like lyrics. It's just something with me. I just like lyrics and songs. And are, are you into Joe Joe Bean Esposito? No. Yeah. You, you, you know his shit. You know. Yeah. It. Sweep the leg, Johnny. Yeah. You're the best right. around. No. Nothing's ever gonna bring you down. No. From the no. Karate Kid. Yeah, I know that one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm liking the old like the old school type of uh, type of stuff though. But yeah, I get what you're saying though. Um. What's sort of the band's influence of the music that you guys are putting out there right now? A lot of it, I'd say, a band called Volumes, and a lot of it we base on Meshuggah. Okay, that, that's cool. I like that though. That, that would be cool. Um, and some of the shows that you guys performed, the four that you did so far, what's what was one of your best shows that you think so far out of the four that you guys did? Uh, probably Night Cleveland. Okay. Okay. Uh, we got pretty good crowd reaction, and it was pretty packed there. Okay. For the we played the first day, so. Okay, and you got a couple of shows coming up too, right? Uh, yeah. The next one is the second day of the Cleveland Music Festival. And that's in the, the what the twentieth. Uh no, it's actually the sixth. The sixth. Okay. Yeah, September. You got a show coming up the twentieth too, don't you? Yeah, the twenty eighth. No, oh, the, that's October. Twentieth is in at JB's in Kent. Yeah. Clarity calls for yeah. and I forget who else. Right. Yeah. And then, uh. What are the other two? There's one in October 12th is at the Cove in Geneva with our uh, buddies in Psychosis. Okay. Yeah, I know um, those guys. They're pretty good guys. So. Yeah, we just played yeah. with them uh, yeah. last week on, at, in Mentor. Yeah. Who's some of your favorite uh, local bands to play with? Um, I don't know. There's been so many. <laughs> like, I really? I sit there and count all yeah. day. Like. <laughs> right. Well, okay. Out of all the shows that you guys done so far, you know, who was, who was your, what was your favorite show and, and you know, you, I heard you, know, you guys played with Impending Lies too, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know Jay personally from the band, and uh, they're great guys too. Um, and you did a couple other shows. Uh, who Who were some of the other bands you played with on those shows? Uh, <laughs> this was before Brandon, but back in January we played with Switchblade Scarlet. They're a good band too. Which, which for what we play yeah. and what they play, we're like, I don't know how this is gonna go. The crowd, for some reason, liked us. Like their, that's like the crowd. bash. That's like the bash, dude. I mean, look. I mean, we got Morality Check, you know, which is a metal band, right? You know, you got Necros Obscura, that's a metal band. You got the Burning Burning Harlots, which is you know an alternative rock band. Then you got Darling Waste. I mean, come on. I mean, that's that's a totally different genre of music, right there. Right, right. So, I mean, those type of shows I kind of like because you get like all you get a mix of everything. Right, right. So it kind of works out for everybody though. Um, but yeah, what type of shows do you guys like putting on though? Do you like just staying with like all metal bands playing or do you like mixing it up a little bit? Would you play with, let's say a hip hop guy came out there and started the show or something like that. And then you guys played after him or something like that. We do it as long as right. we got a good crowd. You exactly. Know. Right. That's, and that's the type of thing. I, I met a band, a local band here in Cleveland. Am I going to mention their names? We were doing the birthday bash. Mm-hmm. The guy came up to me and he says, "Yeah, I'll play the bash. I'll do the bash. You know, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be great." I was gonna have some hip hop guy up there for like fifteen minutes, you know, at the beginning of the show or whatever. Well, we don't play with uh, hip hop guys. We're we're a death metal band. <laughs> I'm like, 
Are you serious? Yeah, because then you're just boxing yourself. Right, in. exactly. Why would you? Why would you even like do that? Why would you even say that? You know. Uh, and then, like, I think it was like six months later, I watched. You know, I was watching some of his feed. You know, that was going on, and uh, I was on MySpace at the time, <laughs> and that was a long time ago. And uh, they had a show with a hip hop guy, <laughs> so they thought about it for a minute. Well, maybe we should have played the bash or whatever. So it kind of worked out though. Um, What's okay as far as the band? Where do you see your, your guys' uh, selves in five years? Hopefully, still doing this. Yeah. Do you, I know at least if I'll still be playing music, whether it's with this band or whatever, right? Whatever I'm doing at that time. So, what got you into music? Ah, uh, just being that like. 13, 12 year old kid right. and discovering just wanted band. a band. Yeah. I want to be in a you band. You do it for the pussy? No. no? That There's, just comes with well, it. Yeah, that comes <laughs> with it. <laughs> really? Can, we, can, you, can you actually say that a local band, you know, like, even a local Hell unsigned yeah. band? Yeah, play the little clubs, like little dive bars. Really? That's when you get the old drunk hooches. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> oh, yeah. The cougars? You know, no, they're not. They're oh, saber tooth. <laughs> yeah. They're mammoths. Have you had any cougars yet? Just in bars. Just, just in bars? Just me walking in there. <laughs> Any of you guys, are you single? Uh, no, I'm not actually. Are you single? No. Let's see, are you married? No. You yeah, married? No, okay. we're not married. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep the stories for a minimum. <laughs> just in case your, 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 your women are listening or whatever. <laughs> you know. But um, I think I got a phone call here. Uncensored Net Noise, you're on the air. What's up? I know I'm on the air. What's going on? Not much. Why not? What are you all sassy about? I'm not sassy. What do you want? <laughs> I want to speak to Tim with Soil. What's up, guys? I love your band. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, um, you guys are you guys are badass. Can you do? I know what you know. Can you do that <laughs> fucking crap, man? <laughs> no, they can actually do uh, something a little bit better for you. Hold on, let me see if I can get this up for you. They they brought me in a disc. Don't, dude, don't, don't ever say, let me see if I can get this up for you. When another dude is Here you go. Here. Listen. Oh. Shut up a minute. Listen. And maybe you're one of those cats when you're here and you're wondering what's going on. You'll remember June 6th in the year 2000 when it was real, there was a band here that loved you. There was a band here that knew that we'd be nothing without you. And we tried, and we tried, and we tried to live up to your expectations because There you go. There you go. That's from one of their shows. You like that? Oh, you do. It's good. Okay. Sure. Awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> any any, any other tough. questions for the band? Huh? Any other questions for the band? I'm getting warmed up. You know how I operate. Do we got to jump right to it, or mm. can we freaking socialize for a second? We can socialize. Go ahead. What do you have? All right. Well, if you're going to be like that, I can have people from New York give you a call. No, I don't want that guy from New York calling <laughs> me. I'm good. Oh, I figured that. Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for asking. You're right, exactly. So what's up? Nothing, man. Just work, working, working. I, 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 well, I kind of realized so you, what, you haven't, you guys, you haven't you really called in the show. You last week, huh? Out at Tequila Jacks? Uh, yes. And there was third. Did you see me? I jumped in front of the bus, man. Did you see me do that? Yeah, actually, I, I recall that. You, you really? That, that was me, dude. Oh, really? Can you? Yeah, can you sign my cast? <laughs> <laughs> I will, man, if you want me to. Fuck yeah! Will you put a pentagram in that on it? I like pentagrams, <laughs> and I want. I always want to get pentagram tattooed. Only if I can draw the Cookie Monster with it. You go. Will you do the cookie? You do that, man, and that's cool. Yeah. yeah, he'll do that for you. He'll do that in, in person for you. Cool, man. Cool. It's better. Then, dude, when I when you see me in person, don't ever say, "Hold on, let me get this up for you." Don't say that, dude. It's not pro- it's not dude protocol. Hey, I've learned respect. Don't worry about it, brother. <laughs> cool, cool. Are you guys? Uh, how are you enjoying your seat next to the Taint Smasher over there? That's me. <laughs> he's enjoying just texting somebody right That's now. right. Right, yeah, he's probably texting. He, he's texting his dastardly doers out there to carry out his bidding. I'm working <laughs> on it, yes, behind the scenes. Hey, Dom, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's shaking, Bacon? <laughs> That's right. That is right. 
I done. You haven't met the that's right quota for the evening. I'm working. I think I got six in so far. I know you're well under quota. I'm getting there. That's yeah. right. Trust me, it, it it will be filled by the end of the show. <laughs> I, I feel sorry for you, Chris. You got to deal with that now. I know, I know. I appreciate it, though. I appreciate the love that you give me every week when you do call in. I try, I try, man. I try to help. Right. We're all, one, we're all one big family, man. Yep. We well, we try to work it's together. Functional, it's functional as hell, but a family nonetheless. Exactly. I agree. I agree. All right. You got anything you're, else? You're be- doing good things. You got anything else before we let you go? Uh... No, man, I got a scratchy butt right about now, man. I'm going to go deal with that. All right, that sounds good to me, though. All right. Well, let me know how it works yeah. out for you. Let me know. You know, call back and tell me if it, you know, if it worked out for you. I'll video it and I'll send you in. That's <laughs> perfect, man. I'll throw that bitch up on YouTube. <laughs> Later. Later. All right, here we go. All right, so I don't know where to go from there. But the, the your band as a whole, um, when they started – you know, back in the day, and you started getting everything going. Um, was it a rough road to get your your band started? Uh, kind of, because yeah. uh, it started with uh, with some of the roadblocks you guys had. Uh, at first, not finding a bassist and right. vocalist for about almost eight months. You you know what you you <laughs> see that a lot with some of the local bands here in Cleveland too. It, I mean, the good friends of the show, I love them to death. I'm gonna mention them, uh, Demons Within. I think they went through how many how many basses or how many uh, guitarists they went through. A lot. Oh my god! I Every, even tried out for them. Oh my god! Joe is like that's a different. Story. I almost did too. Right. <laughs> Joe has been going through like you know guitarists like left and right for his band and stuff like that. I, I you know I really feel bad for him and stuff because he's really trying to push the band to another level, and uh, you know you you just don't have the commitment from some people though. Do you find that with you know some of the you know some of the bands you were in before? Or uh, even maybe even in this one, you know, is there any, you know, any bumping heads with each other in the band? Uh sometimes, but it's right. just it's really over just stupid shit. Stupid stuff. Yeah, that's what it, that's normally what it is with bands. I mean, it's always it's it's always something stupid that happened with you know, you know, you were late to practice or something like that, or you didn't make it to practice, and you know, this guy's a slacker or something like that, you know, or whatever. Well, ours is usually about just when it comes to writing songs, right? <laughs> no one contributing. Sometimes no, it's just I want it this way. No, I want it this right. way. Right D- yeah. now, do all you guys contribute to all the music or in all the songs? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, has anybody from the band so far wrote one song for about you know the whole entire thing? Not really. No. no. It's just now if, a, if if someone did from the band, would you guys maybe play with that idea of like letting letting that song go if it was really good? Oh yeah. Okay. We might be like, can we tweak this a little bit? Right. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that you know that can be done with uh, some of the bands though. But what what are some of your challenges right now with your band right now? Uh, right now we're just trying to uh, get into the studio to record our uh, new disc. Okay. Are you uh, doing it on your own or are you guys got to uh, are you going into a studio to actually do it? We're going into an actual studio, but it's coming out of our pocket and yeah. we're working with somebody that's kind of a bigger name. Okay. So it's going to be more, more, uh, finance involved with that right do you find it hard to come up with the funds for some of these uh albums that you guys put out or 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 is it you know a day-by-day type of thing um what would you say like a day-by-day thing kind of yeah it's pretty much we just save money and then we figure out something and we'll put we'll throw in (laughs) right exactly yeah it's like it's like a savings account for the for the band and then you just you know keep keep uh, throwing the money in there until you guys get enough to put you know a three track EP together or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Right. Um, now is this going to be a full length CD that you're putting together? Or actually, is this... actually, it's going to be a four song EP. Four. So. Oh, that's cool. All right. So uh, you only have the one song that we played tonight so far from the band, right? Or do you have other tracks that are already mastered, ready to go? Uh, no, we we recorded that uh, song back in the spring, and okay. then. Um, we we recorded it because we we were back, but we had all the old music from 2010 with old members, and then uh, we decided to go record just the single just to get something new out. You right. know what I mean? Don, and then you, uh, this, that single is actually going to be re-recorded right. on the. 
the EP that we're going right. to go and record. Now, Dom can probably answer this question, too, because he just started in a, uh, in a band, too, Morning Wagon. Yeah. Now, do you find it kind of hard, like, you being a new guy on in this band here, do you find it kind of hard to actually, uh, you know, uh, play some of the old stuff that Morning Wagon's been doing? It, t- it took probably about a month. About a month? Before the, the stuff really got stuck in my head. I mean, right. I still, I'm still, like, at 75 80%. You know, I still couldn't tell you what the hell the name of the songs were. Right. But I'll play I, I definitely don't know any of the words of the songs. Right. But as long as I know the melody, the music. And the chords and all that. And, I, and all I know, all I, all I know is I look good when I play <laughs> and I make our, make the rest of the band look good. That's all that matters. So. Right. Now, how about you? Is it, is it the same way with you? I mean, trying to figure out some of the older stuff that, you know. I, I grew up as a jazz musician at okay. first. So it's like. So do you actually read music, or do you yes. actually? Or you... I've even composed music before. Okay. okay. Um, it's not too hard for me if I just sit there and just keep playing it, especially when they just keep playing parts over. Yeah. I'll I'll figure it out really like snap. And you memorize it really quick. And yeah. How long did it take you to memorize some of the songs? Um, when you went out to do your first gig, how many songs do you guys usually play? Like like maybe six or seven or eight or nine. I think whatever. like about eight. We yeah, play. eight of them. Yeah. So you played eight songs. How long did it take you to put? figure out all eight songs so that way well, you can play this gig the next week uh well throughout time we didn't play shows at first okay. they, they, when i first started we just practiced all the time right yeah, and you, he i did say about a, about, a, about month, a month but that was because uh all of uh, well me and he just would go with me and uh phil the other guitar player and we'd show him all the songs okay and we could do that because the three of us weren't working so we had all the time in the world yeah. just to go down that's the nice thing about it though yeah. yeah and now that when you start getting jobs it's going to get kind of hard you guys you guys are all working now right yeah 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 so now see how I, the, does the uh practice kind of like once a week twice a week or something like that now or is it's it like about twice a week yeah see yeah it kind of mellowed out before it was like almost every other day right yeah. you guys were playing yeah, you know we, so we'd be doing it yeah. for like six to seven hours right there's some local bands in Cleveland that just throw you to the wolves. They go, okay, look, we have these tracks. We, we got a gig next week. We need you to learn these like eight songs and before the, the show or whatever. That's what I did. That's what they did to me. Right. So like They said, here's here's where we're going to play these 12 songs or whatever. Right. You can come to practice. We're practicing one day a week. He said, in a month and a half, we're playing our first show with you. If you want to get up there, go for it. If you're ready or not, get up there. Fuck it. Yeah, so we play. I'll do what I could do. Yeah. The good thing about it, the, you know, the band that I'm in, Morningwood, it's, it's wagon. <laughs> the thing about let's go with Jeff was saying in the chat. <laughs> it's just, it's really you have to keep good timing, right? And me and the guitarist, we're like right on it. And then as long as I know when he's when he's going to stop and when I'm going to stop, we're like we're real tight. And it. it's only every, everywhere else we're loose, but yeah, yeah, you know, we're tight there. That's the thing, though. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of bands that, you know, just throw you to the wolves. Like Dom, he just got thrown to the wolves saying, look, you got to learn these whatever, how many amount of songs, you know, before we go live. And he just he just played a, a gig, two gigs, actually. One on a patio and another one where? Uh, um, same place they played last week. Right, at the Tequila uh, Jacks. T- at Tequila Jacks. Played here with Switchblade. Right. Um, Scarlet and who the hell else we play with? Yeah. There's like five, four There's like, bands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a thousand, a thousand, thousand fold. fold. Yeah, they're a good band too. But yeah, that's the type of stuff that I'm saying though. I mean, and, and a lot of the local bands don't actually, you know, take the time to say, well, look, let's get our new drummer or our new guitarist or something, you know, worked out first before we go and play gigs. They just throw them to the wolves and that's kind of sucks though. And that kind of, you know, that's why you start losing members of the band really quick because the drummer or right. the or the guitarist or the bass is like, Dude, I can't learn all this shit in a fucking week. How am I going to learn all this in a week? Right, right. You know, so, yeah, I get though. Um, your five-year goal, um, you said that you just want to keep playing? I mean, do you, do you see yourself, like, maybe trying to get a, a record label or a deal or something like that? Yeah, right. building a press kit. Yeah. Okay, an like, EPK? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Electronic press kits are awesome when you're, when you're with a local band, though, especially when you have videos involved and stuff like that with a local band. Um, if you don't have any of that type of stuff, dude, it's kind of hard for like uh, uh, show promoters or oh, even yeah. the clubs to even like listen to your music and stuff. And th- the one thing that local bands don't realize too, or they, they 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 overdo, is when they put their EPK together and they put like a demo CD together for the uh, the promoter. They they make it the full song, you know, like. They, they're only going to listen to it for like three to four minutes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you mix it up with three to four different songs and then you throw that as an EPK 
and then maybe throw a video up or about you know who you guys are and maybe have each one of you talk about each one of you guys in the band that's awesome though I'm, i notice a lot of bands don't even have that right and they just say well like for instance there was a band that dom's on dom's show you know they were supposed to be selling tickets for this particular show uh to promote it on on uh, saturday september 14th at the tequila jacks and they basically said we'll bring the thunder we don't have to sell tickets <laughs> well no you need to sell tickets in order to bring people because that doesn't help the promoter that's actually trying to put the show on right and to get asses in the in the bar to listen to them because you may bring the thunder with three people you know yeah. and it's not really you know it's not too good for you know the promoter or the the club that he's actually getting the gig from because some of the bands don't realize that the promoter has to pay for that club Right, yeah. You know, they got to pay the two hundred dollar or four hundred dollar room rental for that room, and then they don't make any money, and they don't make any money on it. And then they, the bands are like, "What the fuck, man?" Uh, and, they, and then they blame right. the promoter. They blame the promoter, fault. but no, the no, it's gonna be it's gonna be you. <laughs> yeah. you. You're the you're the band. You should be out there promoting it. And that's some things that, like the one band that Dom had to get rid of was, you know, they weren't promoting enough to get the the, the numbers up to you know keep. Uh, uh, asses in the seats at time but i don't know it's weird though i think i got another caller caller on here what's up stop giving stop sucking dom's ass like he did something <laughs> he's a marionette well i know that well did you did i got you... a question for the band all right go ahead real quick do you see in your future uh, like a goal do you want to buy a ticket for the skull and earth and grave and morning wagon and the gluttons <laughs> and dead east garden at tequila jacks on september 14th Really, Jeff? Hey, at least he's promoting his show. I know. You know what the fo- <laughs> you know what the you know what the Foley pop is? I don't. That was the mix. That was the mix Foley pop, cheap pop. Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of realize that. But all right, but let me ask you this, Jeff. While you're on the on the phone with me, will you be at the uncensored net noise uh, birthday bash at, uh, September twentieth over at the uh, Rock City Tap House? I was going to, but we had the Maximum Threshold Magazine Garage Band Party, and Soil's going to be playing that, so I have to go there. You're an asshole. Soil. You're an asshole. <laughs> Such an asshole. <laughs> Swear to God. When you come in studio, I'm kicking you square in the nuts. That's what I heard, man. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> yeah, we're, go- we're going. All right, cool. I'll see you Dom, there. Dom's, dri- Dom's driving, man. Oh, okay. That's right. All right, cool. That's right. That's oh, dude, right. I... I- I'll be uh I'll be I'll be down because uh the shameless self promotion machine that I am for MT and this show, I will be down on the air one Friday before the fourteenth. That's cool. And uh we'll get some cheap plugs out, man. All right, cool. All right, that'll work then. And we'll breathe some noise and, and all that good stuff. Awesome. Dom get those get those guys in the seek and destroy and seek and shelter and run to the <laughs> underground and all their buddies. Yes. To buy some tickets. I'm on it. All right. <laughs> Thank give, you. Give him a morning wagon special, too. The morning, oh, wow. The, woot, woot. the morning wood special. <laughs> Should I be scared? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jeff. Wait, later. Later. All right. Here's Jeff. Call him back. Oh, I didn't ask him about his ass scratching. Ah. Oh, crap. Well, whatever. So... All right, so I think what we should do is take a break and we get the other member of the band. And tell me about, uh, let me, give me a little bit of like dirt on the other member that's sitting in the green room. You got any dirt on him right now so I can bring up on the show? Uh, he is wearing us uh, flip flops. Is he wearing flip flops? Yeah. Okay, that's not good. He's a little emo <laughs> scene crying boy. Is he really? He yeah, like, no. does, he, does he like the emo music? He, he likes to cry tears of blood. Does he, <laughs> what, what is, what, blood, like does, bride. Yeah, does he like blood on the dance floor? No, that he band? no, he doesn't. Or what's that other band? Um, oh God, what is that? Oh, my daughter likes that band. Uh, Alexandria or Asking something? Asking Alexandria. Yeah. <laughs> Does he like that band too? Uh, I'm not sure. You'll have to ask all him. Right, well, we'll ask, what, is he kind of fruity? No, he's all okay. right. All right, cool. all right. I just want to make sure before I you know go any further with it. I don't want to piss him off or nothing. And he leaves or whatever, you know. It's okay. I'll just go cry about it. Right. And then when, the, yeah. And then and then when I when, love you, Brandon. When when he le- when you leave, when you leave, then I'll ask him about you. Get some dirt on you. So there might be some more dirt on you though. All right, we're gonna take a, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna get the other member of the uh, band on Brandon. We're gonna talk to him for a little bit and find out if he likes that. Uh, uh, blood on the dance floor or asking Alexandria or whoever those bands are. I don't know who they are. 
Does he wear his hair in his eye? <laughs> yeah, he used to. Used to. Oh my god, dude! Now he has like a. a I don't know what. <laughs> Does he have a mullet? He's got the rat tail. Oh my now. god, you got the rat tail now. Dude, just give up on this. Wear a baseball cap and say, fuck it. All right? All right, we'll be right back. We're listening to Uncensored Net Noise on uh, MorningShowCentral.com. You're listening. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. <laughs> Don't touch that mouse, or we'll come to your home and pistol whip you. Ah! You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. Right here on MorningShowCentral.com. If you're looking for the best in musical equipment, recording gear, sound reinforcement, and more, Guitar Center has you covered. Guitar Center, located at 26635 Brook Park Road in North Olmsted, has the tools of your trade. With the largest selection of music and sound gear in the area, they cater to your musical needs and have the knowledge to help you out. Guitar Center in North Olmsted. MorningShowCentral.com uses them. You should, too. Need to know more? Go to GuitarCenter.com. You want a date? I'm going to puke on you. Gee, I don't think I have a price for that. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. Right here on MorningShowCentral.com. If you have a product or service, let people know know about it. Get your message out there and advertise on MSC Radio Network. It's easier than you think. And the whole planet is listening. (laughs) Find out how you can advertise. Email Chris at MorningShowCentral.com. Looking for reliable and affordable Shoutcast audio or video hosting? JWN Media offers complete Shoutcast hosting solutions for business or personal use. All plans come with full listener stats, custom web scripts for implementing your service into your existing website, full server control, super fast network, and huge bandwidth limits, a 99.5% uptime guarantee, and friendly, knowledgeable support personnel dedicated to making your hosting experience fun and easy. With plans starting at only three dollars a month you have no excuse not to get a server of your own plus with the option to add auto dj and on-demand services you can be confident your station will be all it can be custom plans are also available at their website simply visit jwnmedia.com and click the shoutcast hosting link to get started right now Hey, local bands and unsigned artists. What if I told you there was a place in Cleveland where you can get your merch made and have it sold in one location? What if I said you could bring your CDs and tickets to upcoming shows to this location? And what if I said you could do live acoustic sets at this location? I bet you're thinking there's no such place in Cleveland. Guess what? You'd be wrong. Contact Rick Navario at Rock City Cleveland and tell him you need merch made and you want to sell it in his store. Now, how cool is that? You can tell your fans to come down and get your stuff. And I think he'd ship your products to your fans. And local. Contact Rick Navario at Rock City Cleveland today. 216-622-0377. That's 216-622-0377. Call the show toll free. 1 888 668 0742. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network on MorningShowCentral.com. Oh, wow. Language. Okay, he was PMSing. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. Check out Uncensored Net Noise every Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here. Uncensored Net Noise on MorningShowCentral.com. Oh, great. Not another farm bill request. Check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MorningShowCentral. Denying one farm bill request at a time. <coughs> Prepare to get your car rocked rock. to Kingdom Come. Welcome back to the show that doesn't discriminate. We'll bang everyone equally. You can handle that? You've got a job. It's Uncensored Net Noise. It's Uncensored Net Noise. So welcome back to Uncensored Net Noise. Live on MorningShowCentral.com. If you'd like to call the show, 
following message is for those with a credit score of 800 and below. Who wouldn't want better credit? Did you ever wonder how different life would be from just having a higher credit score? Are you tired of being turned down for any kind of loan or only offered high interest rates because your credit score is holding you prisoner? Life doesn't have to be that way anymore with access to Turn Score. By increasing your credit score only 50 to 100 points, it can potentially save you tens of thousands of dollars in interest over just a five to 10 year period. It can be the difference in getting approved for a personal loan, business loan, high limits on credit cards, a brand new car lease, or even a home mortgage. We see so many ads from companies that give us our credit score, but once we get our credit score, what are they going to do to actually repair your credit? Unfortunately, nothing. Until now, TurnScore is the first automated credit repair platform that is simple, safe, and secure. You'll be empowered right from the comfort of your own computer, so you can challenge and repair your credit report to ensure it's fair and accurate. TurnScore is specifically developed with you in mind. There's no more need for an attorney, credit repair companies, or credit counseling. More importantly, no more need for paying higher fees. TurnScore will help you get back on track and get the buying power you need. So whether you have bad credit, average credit, or even good credit. TurnScore is helping turn lives around one credit score at a time. Go to TurnScore.com and enter the promo code MSC20 and get 20 bucks off your purchase. That's T-U-R-N-S-C-O-R.com. T-U-R-N-S-C-O-R.com. TurnScore.com. Lakewood Computer, located at 14035 Madison Avenue in Lakewood, has it all. If you're in need of computer repairs or want to cut the cost of ink cartridges and printing supplies, count on Lakewood Computer in Lakewood, Ohio to provide it all. For the past five years, Lakewood Computer has been providing you with a huge assortment of computer equipment and services at very competitive prices. Lakewood Computer purchases and sells pre-owned desktops, laptops, and related equipment, and they offer outstanding prices on aftermarket printing supplies supplies, including toner cartridges and ink cartridges. With 29 years of professional experience, Lakewood Computer is highly confident in their ability to enhance your overall computing experience. Check them out online at joeslakewoodcomputer.com. That's joeslakewoodcomputer.com. Or give them a call toll free, 855-580-0768. That's 855-580-0768. I know, I know, oh my god, I know what we're gonna do. Oh, it's so delicious, I can almost taste it. If you're looking for the best sub shop in town, look no further. Hanini Subs, located at 7310 Lorraine Avenue, is the place for you. Stop in for a cold cut sub, cheeseburger and fries, wingdings and fries, and so much more. I can almost taste it. Hanini Subs at 7310 Lorraine Avenue is open 24 hours a day. Check them out on Facebook, facebook.com slash burrito crazy. And if you mention MSC Radio Network, you'll get a dollar off your meal. It's all good at Hanini Subs. So damn good.
previously on Uncensored Net Noise. Uh, what'd you do over the weekend, Dom? Oh, man, I got my hand pregnant four times. I bet. I tried to make mouth babies, but it didn't work out. Wait, I couldn't wait. stop, find... stop, stop. Mouth babies? Yeah. Um, are you, wait, okay. Okay. You so never, You ever try to make mouth babies with your woman? Uh, okay. It's like wall babies, but in your mouth. I get it, though, but <laughs> does Kelly, does Kelly care that you're saying that you're trying to make mouth babies? She's not listening. Are you sucking your own penis? I wish I All could, right. man. <laughs> <laughs> it's uncensored net uncensored noise. Uncensored net noise. What happens when a dysfunctional family stops taking their medication? Oh, this is so hilarious. Keep listening and find out. It's uncensored net noise. All right, we're back. You want to call the show? The number is 888-668-0742. Or get to the website, morningshowcentral.com. Jump in the chat. Dom's in there, so am I. Dom, I never asked you at the beginning of the show because we had this long-ass intro and we were playing the uh, Paul Stanley bullshit. Yeah. What did you do over the weekend? Last or actually, weekend? actually, yeah, the last couple of weeks because you haven't been here. What did you, what I you did two doing? shows. It was in a row. Yeah? Had, um, well, I know it was a sold-out. We did a sold-out show over at Tequila Jack's. Right. And then we had a sold out patio show. Yeah. That was a family reunion thing. Okay. With the dogs. Right. Yeah, that was fun. It actually was there was fireworks. I showed you the fireworks that Yeah, you were you were telling me something about that too before the show started. They had professional fireworks afterwards in nice. his backyard. Yeah. Was this a bunch of hill jacks? No, no, no. Fireworks? No, I'm, I'll I'll bring it up here. Okay, soon. show me that. Yeah, because I, I like to see this though. You this was just the end of it. This mm. went on for like a half hour. Of this continuous boom, boom, boom. So you were playing while fireworks no, were going? No, no. Oh, we played after. first. How, how, how crazy would that be if you're you're playing and then all you hear is nothing but fireworks in the background? That would have been funny. <laughs> and, be, and no one would be watching you play. <laughs> They'll be watching the, the, the fireworks as, as, as all this crap goes on. What it's, do you got? You it's say? like the same thing as having like the uh, hook pull you off stage. Really? Right? Is, oh, is this a video? <laughs> yeah, there's good sound to it, too. All right, let me see this. Sounds like a war. Sounds like the beginning of Metallica's, what is that, one? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, now they have, wow. They they actually have a, um, a finale. That's pretty cool. That was better than most Fourth of July stuff I've seen. Exactly. They, they yeah, had that's a, what it sounds like. They had a bigger budget in Cleveland. <laughs> How long did this go on for? About a half hour. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah. That, no, dude, seriously. The Fourth of July celebration here in Cleveland actually went on for, uh, I'm, I'm not bullshitting you, 15 minutes. Really? 15 I, I minutes. I saw the ones in Berea. Oh, my God. It was literally 15 minutes. That's all that the, that the uh, fireworks went on for. That's nuts, though. And that's all just they bought wow. and were just launching them off. Wow. They had, they had um, there's a pond in the back. Now, did you think the fireworks were you after your performance? Oh, of course. We brought the, <laughs> we brought the pain. <laughs> <laughs> what was that band? What did they say? They brought the thunder? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We'll bring the thunder. Is that what the uh, morning wagon did? They brought the thunder. No, we brought the pain. <laughs> you brought the pain. We had um, we had well, me and Shannon. I have the the Mesa dual rectifier, and he has the crank. He's got the Crankenstein, and I got the the boogie man. And we just turn it up to three. That's it, man. Really? Shit falls off tables. Wow, that's crazy, <laughs> though. All right, so we got Brandon. I, I want to. I'm get... still watching our fireworks. Oh, turn man. off the fireworks already. <laughs> we got Brandon and. Um, well, you, you got crowds. Yeah, it now? was us. Yeah, okay. Apparently, the people are excited. For They're excited right? for Brandon yeah, being on the show. That's great, though. You got a you know That's robbing cool. novation here or whatever. Arousing. Arousing. Yeah. Um, oh, oh. Right. Um, so okay, you're into the emo stuff. No. 
No, <laughs> uh, they they lied. Completely. They lied. They're what are you into? What what, what what uh, sort of music do you listen to? Um, death metal, deathcore, stuff like that. I don't believe it. You don't? No. I swear. Do to you God. have an iPod right now? I have my phone in the. back. You have your phone in the back. Does yeah. it have? Do you listen to your music from your phone? He's yeah. got pop evil on it. Ah, uh, dude. Hey, the other band member in the green room. Bring me his phone. <laughs> Just bring me his phone. All right, real quick. I, I got to see this. I got to see what's in his phone because I, I I'm sort of going with the guys from the band real quick here. You know, I'm believing them. So, hey, uh, new guy, can I get his phone? (laughs) Chris, I tell you what the dream I had last night was. What's that? It was really messed up. What's that? You remember Chunk from the Goonies? Yeah. Did you see the picture that's on Facebook? No. Dude, oh, they have a new, they have a a Goonies picture out there right now. What what they look like today. Oh, Mm -hmm. really? And and Chunk is not Chunk anymore. No. Chunk is like. Uh, 112 pounds. Wow. Yeah. What? Yeah, he's not even... He can't even do the truffle shuffle anymore. <laughs> I had a dream he got gang raped by a bunch of guys, and Dan Aykroyd was the main culprit to it. Are you serious? <laughs> no lie. Fuck it. He was, he was face-fucking chunk, man. <laughs> face-fucking. I'm like, what the fuck? I gotta wake up. It was fucked up dream. <laughs> wow, dude. That's crazy. Ask me if I saved him. Save Chunk. Did you save Chunk? Hell no. <laughs> like, fuck yeah. Just like the guy at the at the Home Depot. I said, move sense? over. Move over, Dan. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm going to ride this train. <laughs> That's crazy. That, that's a serious dream I had last night. Wow. All right, so you so you listen to the, to the Deathcore stuff, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. All right. Like Whitechapel. Okay, cool. I Something believe like it. All right. Uh, the Now, how long you been with the band? Um, since what would you say? Get a little closer to the mic, though. No, sorry. Uh, since what'd you say, like May, May, yeah, something like that? Yeah, in May. May. Okay, yeah, so it's been a couple months. So how was the tr- how's the transition so far with the it, band? It's been easy. It's been is it incredibly easy? Yeah. Uh, they came in. They had like pretty much their entire set was already written, at least instrumental wise, and um, I just put down lyrics and vocals over pretty much most of the songs. A couple songs had vocals already over them, or like had lyrics to them already. But um, I yeah, was the, able older, to, the older stuff. Yeah, I was able to kind of like rework them and kind of make it my own, and you know, just put my own twist on them. Nice. So it was easy enough to do. Okay, and and with with uh, you played in other bands too. Yeah, I have. What other bands you played in? Um, my very first band was when I was like fifteen or sixteen. So really? In high school. Yeah. Was it an emo band? It was a post hardcore band. Oh, okay. My Chemical Romance. No. It's a tribute band. <laughs> <laughs> tribute band. Is there really one out there? If Look that up, Dom. See if there's a My Chemical Romance <laughs> tribute band. I'm kind of curious now. I'm sure there is. It wouldn't is. surprise me. Yeah. Now, do you guys play covers? That's the other thing too. I, I never. I, that's good. I, that's a good question. Do you guys Actually, play? we're we've been trying to pick as a band something to cover, but we haven't. You haven't, come pick, up. You haven't come up with nothing yet. No, not yet. Everyone's like, we should cover this, and then everyone's. Don't like, do Pantera because no. everybody does Pantera. No, we're trying like it's either we do something like really poppy right. or something like really old like like old school kind of right. like death metal something like that. Right. We're not quite sure what we want to do yet. And there's a local band here in Cleveland called Dirt. Have you heard of them before? Yeah, I have. Oh I have. my god. I didn't know they were still around. Oh, they're still around. <laughs> they're in this building. I did a oh, show I did a yeah. show with the, the drummer I think it was. Oh uh, yeah. Yo, I did it with the whole band. Yeah, right. Just Shit. the drummer? Just the drummer. He's up there just playing by himself. You know? it, was, it, was, it was cool, man. We did a show. It was them, um, Ringworm, and Danny... Oh, not DeVito. <laughs> DeVito. <laughs> That'd be funny if Danny Danny, Dia- Danny Diablo. Okay. We, okay. Played, we played the Gora okay. with them. It was well, really cool. Well, the cool thing about it, though, they, they do a cover of Black Sabbath, right? No, it's Ozzy. I'm sorry, Ozzy. Mm-hmm. Um... He, they do a cover of Ozzy. They go into that, and then they they go into Mama, Mama, I'm Gonna Knock You Out by LL Cool J. What? Dude, the transition is fucking wild. It's it it's it's a it it'll blow your mind if you ever heard it before. And it, it's it I don't know. You Bring just, it up, pull it up. Let's hear yeah, it. You think it's on YouTube or something? It's on YouTube, but I don't think it, the quality of the audio is any good to actually play on the air though. But just look it up. Look up Dirt on on the uh, old YouTube. Mm-hmm. And uh, pull up uh, cover Black Sabbath or something like that, or Ozzy Osbourne or something like that. You'll see it. I'll, I'll post a video. That's what I'll do. I'll post a video up on uh, Uncensored Net Noises Facebook page, and you'll be able to watch this because this it's phenomenal. The, like I said, the audio is not the greatest, but the transition how they do it is freaking phenomenal. Because they did it at one of our shows that we had uh, a couple years ago. I think maybe about four or five years ago. Um, over at the at, before it was a Hi Fi Club. 
Right. And uh, we were we were there. We were doing a show, and I think it was like our oh God. What was that? Like our spring show or something like that. And uh, they came in, and we brought those guys on. And how they went through the whole transition of that that song was phenomenal. That's something maybe you might want to look into. That that'd be great. We, we trying to mix two together well, uh, or something. We kind of actually did do that. Uh, yeah. Before he joined. Yeah, and um, I know we got a caller, and I see the caller ID, and I know it's Jeff. So hold on one second. Go on. Uh, back when the Harlem Shake was popular. Oh, we, please don't tell me you did that. Yeah, you can look it up on YouTube. Oh, don't do, don't follow in people's. No, the I, way we did it though. Yeah. It, like you said, with the transition. Right. It transitioned into one of our songs. I got to see this. And if you want to, the audio is terrible because oh, it's from my iPhone. It's but, live. Of course, yeah. Of course, yeah. I'm just yeah. going to say I wasn't a part of that when they did that. Yeah. Just toss it out would there. you? That would, was all on them. Would you be cool with it if they, you know. It's too trendy. Too tr- that's what, <laughs> too that's trendy. what I'm saying. It was too trendy. <laughs> it's played out now. That's right, like exactly. Covered, like Gangnam Style or something like I that. Mean, that I mean, sense. like 19 Action News and Channel 8 and Channel 5 and all the radio stations and all that crap did it. We we stood on the sideline, didn't even <laughs> fuck with it, because we knew it was all. We knew it was going to be everywhere. Let it run its course, right? Exactly. Uncensored net noise, you're on the air. What's up? Death court, dude. I got a question for you. You said White Chapel is an influence for you. Yes. You dig them? Do you get the Muir and all those crappy breakdown bands too? Of course. What kind of question is that? You do. <laughs> Here, well, here's another one. Do you have an influence? Oh, this is a really old school band that, that started the deathcore thing. Do you like the Skull? And if you do, you can see them live <laughs> September 14th at Tequila Jack. I'll tell you what. I'll buy a ticket if you buy a ticket to come see us at the Cleveland Music Festival on the 6th. Ooh. And then you drag his dumb ass to, uh, to the birthday bash on September 20th. <laughs> Well, I'm at all these places. I'm I'm freaking county wide, man. Yes, he is. Speaking of a show, I have to mention this though. Right now, Ron, uh, producer of the show, is right now at the uh, at Peabody's right now, watching the band Creed Diaz. They're uh, going on stage here at ten forty five ish, somewhere around there. So if you're in the area, uh, listening to your listening to us on your smartphone, they're playing at Peabody's right now. So if you want to go meet Ron up there, he's up there right now. So. Uh, I'm, I'm heading down to Peabody's about uh, 11.30. Oh, okay. Well, the, the band will be off the stage by then. <laughs> I'm not going to see the bands. I'm going to work, Holmes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, there you go. That'll work. Anything I'm else? I'm going to work. I'm going to work. Anything else, Jeff? Uh, dude, don't listen to Deathcore. It takes no talent to, write, to do a breakdown throughout the whole song and go... <laughs> In this different shit, man. There's <laughs> different. Listen there's some good death metal, man. Listen to New Carcass when it comes out. New Carcass is good. There's Listen some really talented Carcass. deathcore bands, though. Listen I don't, to I Immolation. Don't even Listen to Malevolent Creation. Listen to Pyrexia. Good stuff, man. I mean, I listen to all kinds of music. I, the only thing I don't listen to is country. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty well rounded cool. person. Be, don't be one of those little hot topic kids, though, dude. Hot that, topic you're better than kid. That. <laughs> that was like. You're better than that, Smalls. That was like four years ago. <laughs> You're better than that. Don't be like that. He called you Smalls. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't, don't, don't be in the manufactured attitude. Have your own. Oh, my God. He called you Smalls. That's fucking great. I love it. You have a mugshot like Smalls. Oh, my God. That's fucking awesome. Um, All right, guys. You're right. welcome, Tom. All Thank right. you. Thank you, man. Thank That's you, right. Oh, my God. God, I don't know how I feel about that right now. Oh, I don't either, <laughs> but I, you know, Jeff, Jeff is awesome. Um, I, I can't get over calling you Smalls, but okay. Um, it's not your nickname. That's fine, yeah. that, dude. When I see you from now on, I'm calling you Smalls. That's all there is to I'll it. Roll with it. It's cool. That's cool. Um, so where do you see the band in five years? Um, hopefully touring. Honestly, that's my goal. I mean, I've been trying to start something that you know was successful for five six years now okay and this i feel like this is the band that if it's gonna do anything that if i'm gonna do anything it's gonna be with this band honestly right that's the, but here but this take this bit of advice that i give you though all right i mean the, the thing is is that there's a lot of bands out there in cleveland there's a lot of same genres that you guys are doing right now and there's everybody's trying to get it the, the piece of the pie right now and they're also trying to get signed to some label or something like that um my my bit of advice to to you guys is just try to stay together. Oh yeah. yeah, because the problem that you see later on down the road is that you guys get a momentum going, and the momentum's getting good, and it's getting ready to roll down the fucking hill. 
and then a drummer pops out or a guitarist pops out or the singer quits or or <clears throat> something something happens with the band i see it a lot with local bands in cleveland that you know they get the momentum going and all of a sudden like they're no more right. like cardona you know that was a good band back in the day and and i'm not I'm not licking Dom's balls because he was in that band. Won't was be a, the first time, buddy. Won't but, be the first. But it was a good band back in the day, and I liked I liked the sound that they were doing. But they got the momentum going, and all of a sudden the fucking band just fell apart. Ego kicked in. That's yeah, what it was. Right. Ego took the band down. Yeah, don't don't have fucking rock star mentalities and egos and shit. Especially because, when you're playing bars like Verley's, right? Fucking exactly. little clubs on the west side, West Twenty Fifth. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and there's not that many clubs in Cleveland anyways. Right. So my my other bit of advice is, is try to get the fuck out of Cleveland as much as you can. <laughs> That's what we're trying yeah, to do. Right. So, play so other clubs. we're not oversaturated. Right. Here. Play Akron. Play Canton. Go yeah. out to Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Play fucking uh, Chicago or something like that, you know? We have that planned for the, right. in the future. Right, exactly. Because, you know, you could play one, you can play Peabody's one week, and then the next week you're playing the Fantasy. Then after that you're playing the fucking Foundry. I mean, you just went in a full fucking circle. You went around <laughs> right, the block, basically, right. you know? So, I mean, and how many people can you actually get to come to those shows all the time? You you won't. Right. You need to build up some sort of, like, momentum, you know, yeah. in other states so that way they can listen to you. Um, a good example of a band that's doing that is Demons. Uh, another another band is Impending Lies. They're doing it, you know? Yeah. Um, Via the Sun is another one. They're doing it. Um, let's see, who's another? There's another, a couple other bands, too. Um um, Name a couple local bands down. I'm working on it. Um, Shoot, I can't think of them. Uh, Big Time blow, Rush. Blow, no, Blow the Tide is doing it, too. Oh, I was close. Our friends That's... in uh, Along Came a Spider, they just came back yeah, from there. Them, too. Tour. The Missing. Johnny, Johnny yeah. Cable. The missing. Yeah, The Missing is doing the same thing. <clears throat> So they're not trying to play Cleveland all the time, right? You know, I think that's what a lot of like local bands tended to do, like back in the days. They just kind of stuck to Cleveland too much, right? And that's kind of like why the scene almost died down a little bit, and that's why it's kind of like revitalizing again too, is because bands are kind of realizing that you don't have to play Peabody's every single month in order to get a fan base in Cleveland. Right, you can play out everywhere. No, not a knock on Peabody's. Peabody's is awesome. No, but the thing, but the thing is, they got they got to clean their bathrooms a little bit better though. Not having clogged all the time. Right. <laughs> Chris, get on that, man. And when you going to come back on the show, you prick, you're supposed to tell me where you're moving Peabody's. They didn't let it out yet. I know. He's supposed to come on the show and let us know. He's he's going to actually come on Uncensored Net Noise and actually let us know where he's moving Peabody's. Nice. That's yeah. going to be great. I already got the scoop. No, you didn't. <laughs> I did, too. You liar. No, you did. didn't. You didn't get the scoop. I talked to the guy. I, I talked to a guy who talked to a guy who to talked to a guy who knows a guy right. who did a guy in jail. Right. Okay. And he told you the scoop. No, I'm just making that part up. Okay. <laughs> but I did hear from somebody who right. knows him. All right, cool. Um, they were like, oh, that's right. Right. Okay. I, I, I'll tell you off there. Awesome. Awesome. So, one more time. Where are you guys playing at? Uh, we're playing... Our next show is the 6th, and we're playing at Peabody's for the Cleveland Music Festival. Then is uh, September 20th at JB's in Kent. And after that is the 12th... Is, uh, October 12th, yeah. which is at the Cove in Geneva. And then we're playing October 28th at Peabody's again, and we're playing with um, Attila, uh, Upon a Burning Body, and um, a bunch of other bigger name bands, Fallen Captive, another local band. They're going to be yeah. playing that as well. Okay. Um, I don't think we have anything past that. Yeah, I think after, that's after the deadline that, for we're shows. We're going to be hitting the studio, and then probably after that, maybe starting to write. Where do you guys want to play at? If you had any place you could play, where would you play and why? Here or just anywhere anywhere. in the world. It could be anywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Honestly, there's no specific spot that I think we're going to play. Well, there's one, there's got to be a specific spot because if I I can go to Dom and I can ask Dom, hey, where do you want to play at? And he'd probably say like Madison Square Garden or something like that because that's, that's huge, you know? But, you know, if there's some place in the world that you would want to play, where would it be? I, I, I pretty much know where. I, if I was in a death metal band or a metal band or whatever, I know exactly where I want to play. Yeah, actually, you, probably Europe, right? Yes. Yeah. I'd want to play the Download Festival out in. Right. Um, I but I don't know how to play fucking guitar or you know drums or anything like Actually, that. So I don't Ian, know. Ian, who was in here, his old band Cholera, he got to go on tour to Europe. Europe. Really? Yeah. And that's yeah. cool. That's cool. He's got the experience. Yeah. So. Any of those? Any of those like Europe uh, festivals that are going on, especially like it, like during the fall. The oh my god, those things are huge. Yeah, and they have like awesome bands on mm. there. Like you'll see Lamb of God and like 
newer bands, and then you'll yeah. see like Leonard Skinner on it, right? And, like, <laughs> like uh, Black. Sabbath. But they like everything over there. They don't yeah. give a fuck what it is. If you did that here, everyone would be like, "Why are you doing this?" Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why are you mixing country with metal or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. But that that's exactly what they're doing because if you throw Leonard Skinner in with like. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, Backstreet Boys. Right. Yeah. It, it doesn't work. Right. It doesn't right, work. Right, right. You know, so. But at the same time, it also opens up people to different yeah. types of music, too, it, though. You're, you know? you're right. So. You're right there, too. I mean, I, I agree with that, too. But it, but those metal fests in in Europe and overseas and stuff like that. Those, Bill Peters, man. He just came back from one. I was on his show last week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, you were promoting that damn show that you're doing. Yeah, the one on September 14th right. at Tequila Jacks with the Skull, right. Earth and Grave, Morning Wagon, Dead East Garden, and Gluttons. Good. Tickets are fifteen dollars, eighteen dollars day of the show. All right. Get your tickets today. But Give getting back zero seven nine four zero eight zero for your tickets to be delivered to you today. Thank you. Are right, you getting enough plugs tonight? <laughs> um, that's right. Getting back to like I said, like Bill Peters. You know, he, he just got back from overseas doing those metal shows. Yeah, I was on a show last week. Uh, don't do it again. The, and when I'm, you know, all those, he was telling on Facebook, you know, he's showing pictures and, you know, posting up like when the bands were coming up and stuff like that. And he was, showed the crowd and the crowd, it's like a sea of people. Yeah, I've seen those pictures. They're crazy. You know, and it's like, those are the type of shows that these bands in Cleveland need to do. You know, they need to go and do something like that. And I, it's sad. I mean, Cleveland, the music scene here in Cleveland, I don't care if it's the Cleveland scene, the Ohio scene, I don't care what it is, man. They don't show any kind of love. You know what it is? There's more bands than fans. There, I guess. Uh, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. I have to agree. I have to agree. And that's the thing, too, is that people don't want to spend like five bucks to go see a show or ten bucks to see a show or something like that. Yeah, but then. They'll spend a hundred dollars for crappy seats. Right. Go see like a big name artist that doesn't need the money. Really. Right. Exactly. Yeah, like and, and that's what pisses me off about it, because you won't find that it, you know, you won't find it over you know overseas or whatever. They'll right. play. They'll play those overseas shows. Morning Wagon will play that place. Right. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, yeah, man, we're there. I think Cleveland's taking a step in the right direction with the music scene, though, because um, if you look at the Cleveland, uh, the uh, Unite Cleveland Festival that went yeah. down at um. Uh, the Foundry. Foundry. That was yeah. it. Was incredible. There was so many people there, and just a bunch. But they of united all it. the bands together. That was the the cool thing about it, right. though. But again, the turnout for that show for those shows, it all depends on the fans if they're going to come. You can right. only you can only have because what was it like a three day event or something yeah, it was like a that? Two day. Two day event. Yeah. Friday and Saturday or whatever. I thought it was three. I thought it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They, they had a was kind of, they had a pre party yeah. the day before that was free. okay okay. <laughs> But yeah, you can only invite your friends, you know, so many times to come out, or you can invite your fans to come out so many times to go, you know, watch you, and then it starts getting expensive for them or something like that, you know. Yeah. Unless you buy a pass to come all three days, you know. But I don't know. I think a little, I think things need to change here in Cleveland, you know, as far as the music scene goes. Uh, I think the fans need to really show some more love, you know, to these local artists here in Cleveland because there's a lot of local artists here in Cleveland that really can do a lot for the the scene and actually do something and 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 actually try to maybe get Cleveland on the map as being, you know, the best place to come if you're an unsigned band. Yeah. Cuz back in the day it was like early 90s, I believe. I, I I correct me if I'm wrong. Seattle was the big place to go yeah. to play music yeah. and stuff like that. Nowadays there's what's Austin, you gotta go to Austin, man. Yeah. yeah Texas. Yeah, yeah Texas. Texas is the big place now. So that's the that's the thing though. So I don't know. Oh wow. Is your midnight gay lover calling you in? No, it's actually Ron. He sent me some pictures. No, not of his penis. Don't even go there. <laughs> what was he thinking at? <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. Actually, oh, hold on. There it is. Creedius on stage right now. At Peabody's right now. They actually. played the um yeah. they played Beardstock. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they put on a good set. Yeah. Well, they yeah they played the birthday bash last year, and they were fucking phenomenal. They're great. They're great guys. Um, last plugs. Go ahead and get them in. Uh, where are you guys gonna be playing? Uh, and uh, how they can get a hold of you on Facebook or on uh, Twitter or whatever. All right. Once again, we'll be playing um, September sixth at Peabody's for the Cleveland Music Festival. Uh, we still have tickets for that. You can get a hold of on you can get a hold of us on our Facebook Seek Shelter uh, Band. Uh, then we're playing the 20th at JB's in Kent. We'll also have tickets for that. Um, 
After that, we're playing October 12th at The Cove in Geneva. We'll be playing with... I don't think we're selling tickets for that. No, we're not selling tickets. I think it's a walk-up. Right. Um, we'll be playing with... Psychosis. Psychosis. Uh, Never Ender, more bands. Um, and then our last show before we hit the studio to go record our four-song EP is October 28th at Peabody's with Attila, Ponder Burning Body, and uh, Fallen Captive and more. And if you need tickets to any of those or want to get tickets Attila's to any of those... Attila's badass. Their new one. Did you I, hear their new stuff? I was trying to get yeah. them on the show. Fuck, man. That's... Yeah, they're good. Yeah, I'm trying Oof. to. I was trying to get him on the show. Some heavy shit there. Yeah. Man. Speaking of next week's uh, next week's show, I'm working on it right now. Do you know? Hold on. No, Jeff got off the phone. Good. Um, do you know who? Uh, you ever watch that show on Discovery? I think it's Discovery Channel. Duck Hunters? Or no, duck, not them. Duck Chemistry. <laughs> Those guys are cool though. The what is it? Duck Dynasty. Yeah. yeah the Amish. No. Not duck them. Hunters. No. Remember the guys that built guns? Sons of Guns. Yeah. 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 Will Hayden will be on the show next week. Nice. So we're going to talk to him next week and find out what's going on with him. Um, he, uh, I'm kind of curious about if the show's coming back. I'm, uh, I'm addicted to it. I love that show. There's, there's not too many of these reality TV shows that I really watch, but that one I usually did. There's another one that I'm addicted to right now. I, since Sons of Guns is not on the air no more. Gay porn. No. <laughs> is that that mining show that? Gold Rush or whatever it is. Oh, I I seen the commercial for it, I but I never watched it. Dude, I mean these guys go out and, and pull bricks of fucking gold out of the ground. I'm like, sign me the fuck up, dude. <laughs> I want some of that, you know. But uh, yeah, Will Hayden from uh, Sons of Guns will be on the show. Uh, well, tentatively, maybe next week, um, along with Spider. We, no. Oh, there's about a band. No, along <laughs> with Morality Check. And the Burning Harlots. They'll be on the show next In week. In here this week, next week? Yes. Nice. Big show next week. And then the week after that, we have uh, the band uh, Necris Obscura going to be on the show next week. I'm friends with Eric from that band. He's in the chat right now. He's to- he told me to tell Jeremy hi. Okay. Did he really? He said to punch you in the arm. And, and to punch <laughs> you in the arm. But I'm not going to punch you in the arm. There there you go. You got to punch now. <laughs> um, but yeah, they'll be in studio. And then the uh, Darling Waste will be on the show as well. Um, but they're going to be calling over the phone because they're going to be at another gig. And they won't be able to make it in. But um, uh, the Uncensored Net Noise birthday bash is, uh, is September 20th over at the Rock City Tap House in Cleveland. Doors open up at 8. Show starts at nine. Uh, tickets are eight bucks at the door. Uh, if you're under 21, three dollar cover charge. In the Rock City Tap House is 5324 State Road in Parma. Uh, the uh, zip code is 44103 for your GPS. Um, also, the sponsors on uh, the uh, birthday bash is uh, Rock City Cleveland, Lakewood Computer, Cocaine Energy Drink, and Hinini Subs. Uh, they're located on Lorraine Avenue. Uh, dude, they have the best. Dude, I had the uh, one of their um, corned beef sandwiches on yeah. rye. Those motherfuckers are awesome, dude. Where they at? I had two of them. And those things are thick, dude. They're probably about, I don't know, thicker than that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and you get a pickle with it. Fucking awesome, dude. I've seen you eat a cow. You stuck a pickle it's up its ass and you ate the whole thing. No, I want to guillotine a cow. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Dude, I just want to. I, I just want to be the guy that's there that actually pulls the fucking lever as the damn guillotine goes down and chops uh, the, the cow's you head. You put one of those, those brown masks over your head. Yeah, I'd be like the Undertaker <laughs> with a sickle yeah. and shit. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, who do you got on the show uh, tomorrow? Tom? I'm glad you asked. Cause I'm, I just pulled up because we got a fucking big ass show. We have Tracy G. You may may remember Tracy G. from his time in Dio. We have him on the show. He's got this band called Pain Savior. Yeah, it's along with this guy named Alvin Rod, I think Rodriguez. I know I'm fucking it up. But. Stop. Fuck you, Eric. I do not watch Honey Boo Boo. Go ahead. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> then we have the band Pill Buster coming on. And that's um, a doom band. Pretty cool. I think they're out of Maryland. Then we have Des Fafara on, on the show from Devil Driver. Awesome. Then we got the band Strange Karma calling in from Australia. And then we have Bill Steer. From Carcass on the show. Nice. How's that for fucking for a three hour show? All that. That's great. And plus, we may have some more little fun little stuff to throw in here if there's a minute open. If there's a minute open? Well, yeah. You talk one, two, three, four. That's five interviews. You're going to have five interviews on one show. That's right. Dude, I can barely do one. (laughs) (laughs) That's just a typical week show. Dude, 
Yeah, but you got to remember, I do 13 of them here. Yeah, but this is all in three hours. Dude, I have like 100,000 guests come throughout the week here. It's crazy. <laughs> and I, and I, and I, you know, and when it comes to my show at the end of the week, it's like, do I really want to get a guest on or just want to make it easy and just do a show? I know. There's times you know? I think about just, man, just how about just one? Then we can play some new shit. Right. I, 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 guess, want, I, I want to play music. That's I what I want to do. I got so much music. And I, Same I, here. And you got to figure out how you integrate into the show. So you got to play in the background of stuff. They have I, got, I, got, I got music from um, the Burning Harlots. They sent me some stuff. Darling Waste. I have that stuff. Eric, you need to send me some more shit over. Uh, Morality Checks got some new stuff that they just, they, 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 uh, just put out. Uh, I have that. That they're going to be performing at the birthday bash. Um, I, I can't play it until after the bash, though, but I, I do have some of that. The Missing sent me some music. Below the Tide sent me some music. And Pending Lies sent me some music. Dom's sending me some music for his band once they get some crap together. Yeah, we're working on some new material. Um, what else do I have? I, so many bands brought. I just, matter of fact, I got another CD that came in the other day, too. So, um, Big Time Rush. No. No, some other band in Cleveland, though. Miley Cyrus's left Testicle. uterus. <laughs> Dude, speaking of Miley Cyrus, we got a few minutes, right? What did you think? What did you guys think of that? that Miley, the whole Miley Cyrus thing on the VMAs? She got a really weird butt gap. Did you see that? That's like that chicken. That's like a chicken. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. That's not cool. The right. Lizard. <laughs> uh, I don't know, dude. I think people are making too big of a deal out of Do it. Do you think it's worse than what Madonna did back in the day? No, oh, you guys are too young. I I, I know what you're talking okay. about. Did you see the old Madonna footage from when Probably. she was okay? I can't. Like a virgin. Do you think it was skanky that she got up on stage with her tongue hanging out like Gene Simmons, she Molly was, Cyrus? Or she was be, you know what? As she was coked the fuck up. You think? Had, oh yeah, she had to be. You guys ever there. ever see the video of her playing the one uh, Pantera song on guitar? No, uh, yeah, I think I did. Mm. And she was also talking about yeah how she loved the Iron Maiden. Oh, bullshit. Really- <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. She had Iron Maiden shirt on. She's out of her fucking mind. She, she doesn't just- like Iron Maiden. She fucking likes Big Time Rush and all those bands and Blood on the Dance Floor and all that crap. <laughs> like like this guy over here. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> My Chemical Romance. Yeah, that, that band They're too. okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's always got to be someone we got to fuck with on the show. What's that one? And it's Brandon today. I guess. <laughs> they put the opening. Uh, all right. Now... Give me some dirt on the guy that's in the other room real quick before we get no, out of here. It's all on you. you any dirt on him? What do you want to know? Anything, man. Anything. Anything Anything you can, you know, put on him. Gay bathhouses. Yeah, and any of that crap. Around. Yeah. Did he have any, like, sex affairs with, you know, men? Anything like that? <laughs> no. None that we know none of. That, I mean, yeah, he hasn't that told us about him yet. I don't know. <laughs> Did he ever, like, you know, get so drunk where he shit himself? No, but if Probably. you go on the Ohio music scene page and look at us, at our picture in front of the booth from Beardstock, <laughs> yeah. you can see Ethan's, how drunk he was. Does he get, is he a lush? I would sometimes. Uh, sometimes he's, he's a monster. So Let's he, leave it that. he okay, in, in, a, in a in a let's say a whole show. Let's say you did a show. Let's say at Tequila Jacks or whatever. <laughs> No, he was good there. Okay, let's just say hypothetically, you're doing another show. How many beers does he actually go through in a night? I can't even count. You lost count? That's bad, dude. You need a help. Like you know how? No, you know how? There, he, there is a there's a number out there. If you look up the Glim Bay is calling. If you look up the definition of rock star, you might actually see his picture. Really? Yeah. Maybe. The, the chat room begs to differ. They say he loves the cock. Does he love the cock? <laughs> Ian, come here. I know you're I'm in I'm just there. going by Ian. what the chat room says. Come here, Ian. Come on, before we get out of here. There's a lot. They got a lot of their fans in this chat room tonight. That's cool. I mean, where is Ian I can't at? He's probably outside questions. smoking a cigarette. Again? You know what? We have this at practice. Where is Ian? Yeah, that's it. Really? It's really? like, like, where, where is, is Waldo? Ian? Yeah, he yeah. disappears. Right. right. Okay. Well, I guess we're at the end of the show. We won't know if he, I don't know. Well, there you go. The on, that, on that note. Yeah, yeah he likes <laughs> the cock, I guess. Couldn't defend himself, whatever. Right. Can't defend himself. So, you know. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> Whatever, you know, I'm sorry. So you get for calling me emo. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hold on. We got one. Oh, God. Jeff's calling. Hold on. He's probably got something good to say. He probably does. Hold on. Let me get him on the line. Yes, Jeff. Go ahead. That, what was the number he was going to call? <laughs> Glenn Bay. <laughs> Glenn Bay. Yeah, I got the number. It's 440-709-4080. We deliver tickets for the Skull at... Keila Jack, September 14th. All right. 
Cool. You need me next week. Don't say all right like you're blowing me off. The ratings are going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Goodbye. God damn. Yes, go check out the show September 14th with Dom. All right. All the information is on the website at Maximum. Seriously, the top, the top two bands, the Skull. All right, and we Earth know. And Grave. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that they are national touring acts. All right, awesome. The rest of us are just some fucking badass motherfuckers. Local unsigned bands. No, 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 no. No. Yes. I beg to differ. You're not signed. I am signed. To who? And even when I want to be fucking signed too. <laughs> That's what I figured. Well, like like I said, the singer in Gluttons is in Ringworm, oh, and they got a brand new record out, and they're signed. Ringworm's still around. Yeah. Yeah. So. And for a while. Yeah. Well, they were gone for a little bit. Yeah. 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 They, I think they were out for maybe about six months. They did a six month hiatus for a while. They didn't do any tours or anything like that. And then John Capri's in there. I know. Didn't they have it with Camara yeah. too? Weren't they like around and then they just kind of stopped well, doing John, stuff for a couple years? I, well, John stopped touring with him for a little while. Yeah, and then he, I don't know what band he was in, but right. he was telling our bassist that they were going to open up for Metallica or something. Might have been. Hmm. This was like about six months ago, maybe yeah. more. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. All right, we're going to get the hell up out of here. Um, check out all the information on our website at morningshowcentral.com. We have the Uncensored Net Noise birthday bash up there. All the information can be found on our website. If you miss any part of the show, go to our website, uncensorednetnoise.com. There you'll be able to find all the archives of this show and all the other shows we did in the past. Uh, next week, we're going to have... Uh, uh, the Julia Bur- Child. No, the Burning Harlots <laughs> and um, Morality <laughs> Check on the show. We're going to talk to those guys. And maybe, and maybe... Pee Wee Herman? And maybe an interview from Will Hayden from... Fucking uh, Ronald. Can we get Ronald fucking McDonald in here? Why don't you go fucking beat him up? He's over on Independence and Rockstar. No, I want want the real Ronald McDonald here. Not the fake ass one that dresses up like him. (laughs) The little fag running around the red hair. I want the real... Really? I want the real fucking Ronald (laughs) McDonald without the makeup on in the studio. You had to go there. Wow. You know he does. He's a fag. And we're out. You just got to know when it's time to quit. Fuck that noise. We're not quitting. I think you can do better, Ted. I beg your pardon? I don't see anybody headed for the door. Listen to me. It's just like trying to fuck a Catholic girl who keeps saying, no, 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 I don't want to. I'm really, really drunk and you're circumcised. But she keeps on making out with you. She's not leaving your fear. It means she really wants to. She just needs a little bit of a nudge, right? A little bit of a coax, a little bit of a tickle, just to rationalize it to herself, to her God. Do you know what I mean? Did you miss any of the show? You know, you keep hiding from shit in the world, and eventually the world comes to your front door. Nice. That's very nice. I heard an episode of Touched by an Angel. Then check out our website at MorningShowCentral.com and visit the archives for this and other past shows. Also, check out the games, photo galleries, chat rooms, and more. I heard that doing LSD can awaken your demons. (sighs) I ain't got no demons gonna get woke. The views and opinions expressed on this show are not controlled by the FCC. Our wives, girlfriends, gay lovers, or favorite barnyard animals. And if you have any complaints, call someone who cares. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next week for another sick and twisted edition of Uncensored Ned Noise. I don't want to kiss my microphone. If you have any questions, comments, bitches, complaints, or great stories about barnyard fetishes, shoot us an email at show at morningshowcentral.com. Still can't get enough of Uncensored Ned Noise, then check them out at their website at uncensorednetnoise.com. Or if you want to go the Facebook route, facebook.com slash uncensorednetnoise. And for all the sick videos, youtube.com slash uncensorednetnoise. And be sure to check out the live show next Friday night, beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on morningshowcentral.com. Your ad said you do wet work. That's correct. I urinate on other men for money. From Chris and the rest of the gang here at Uncensored Net Noise, have a great weekend. And we'll catch you next week.